Welcome, welcome, hello friends, especially welcome to Mr. Ryan Galland of the New World Pictures Podcast. Thanks for doing this, sir. Oh, oh man, hey, thanks for having me. I, uh, I, I you didn't can call me deep... Chad tonight, though, like if you need to, um, <laughs> if the double Ryan's is too much, you can call me Chad. It's fine. You don't want to be Ryan G tonight? I'm fine. I'm fine with that too. <laughs> uh, I, I, if the thumbnail was not any indication uh, for you, because uh, I, I didn't tell you I was planning on mentioning this, I did a little bit of a deep dive today. I didn't realize that you were a former college humor individual. Well, I was. Yeah, I was in a bunch of their videos. Yeah, yeah. I met a bunch of people doing improv out here in Los Angeles, and so I got cast in a bunch of their videos, and I did a ton of those. And then I did a little bit in the first season of Adam Rooms Everything, which is sort of an offshoot of college humor. So, right. But it just a, just as a performer, I wasn't writing or, or doing anything like that on that. Well, yeah. I also went and watched a couple episodes of F today. Oh, wow. Okay. okay. <laughs> wow. All right. I, uh, I I went all for it. I was getting ready to go and uh, make our thumbnail. And then I was like, let's see if the internet has any good pictures of Ryan. And oh, man. There's a lot there if you look up Ryan Gallant. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I put some stuff out there in the universe. It's uh, it's not bad. It was nice to see you performing. You look great. It looks like you haven't aged in the last 11 years. You look fantastic. <laughs> That's not true. I absolutely have. I dyed my hair, though, for that on purpose, you know, to look like a guy that dyes his hair. Right. Um, which I don't think works or plays, but um, but uh, it just looks like I, uh, you know, I'm afraid to age or whatever. And this gray hair that's underneath his hat, you know, I was like, I'm trying to hide it. But uh, but thank you for watching it. I, I mean, a fun little show and happy. You know, Eft was fun. Uh, I, I especially loved some of the college humor stuff because um, I, I'm not sure if you ever watched. You are now the second person from college humor that's been on the channel. Oh, yeah. Uh, really? Because I had Josh Rubin on the channel. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, he directed me in, in one of those college humor uh, pieces as well. There was a um, Twilight parody and I was a director that was off camera, <laughs> which I always like made me so because I knew Josh and we had a great time. He's a super nice guy. And I was like, why doesn't Josh do this? Right. <laughs> well, I'm never on camera. Like, there's no need to have me. He could easily just do this himself. But I there, was happy to do it. There were so many of those that I was like, Th these people are just incredible. And Ryan got to hang out with everybody, especially one where uh, I believe you signed the name King George. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was uh, the the Constitution one, I think. Right. That was. Yeah. 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 So, with the guy uh, that, that you recently had in your studio, your in-studio interview. That that is what I was about to announce because that still hasn't been made public and uh it still won't go out for another week and a half. To oh, everybody. I see. Okay. Patrons okay. got a real early deep dive into this. Okay. Uh, well, I watched it and I enjoyed it, and he's the nicest dude. He really is. Um, yeah. so for everybody, I'm not trying to be coy here. Uh Ryan did a video with Jim O'Hare from Parks and Rec, and uh it'll be up on Oh, gosh, what is the date even going to be? That's going to be uh, the 25th of this month. Uh, I had the pleasure of having Jim O'Hare sit right here, and we talked for like an hour and a half. And genuinely, the nicest guy, he sat on my stairs and just played with my dog for like 20 minutes. Um, we chatted about Jeremy and made fun of him for like an hour. Uh, <laughs> there's there's so much that he he is just somebody that's been around and working since the early nineties in the industry, which again, for somebody like him, that is not easy to do. It's not easy to be able to go out there and make a living from basically day one and yeah. never have to go back. Uh, Jim is a, an incredible person and um, inspiring to say the least. Obviously, the industry's changed a little bit in the last 30 years, but uh sure, sure. <laughs> he, but he's he's a good dude and he was so nice, so fun to work with. He was such like a you know, sometimes you're like, I'm not a guy that people know, but this guy is, but they were like so he has no attitude like that. Everybody was really cool and uh and we're neighbors. I've I haven't run into him, but we were talking about that during that day because we live in the same neighborhood. And I was like, Well, I'm sure I'll run into him. And I haven't, not in years. <laughs> That's LA for you. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> You'll see somebody you know like constantly running into them for like a week and then not right. see them again for years. It's just one of those weird things. 
Yeah, that's a that's one of those things where it seems like everybody's there and around you, and then it also seems like they're always in hiding because you hear that they're there, but not really. Right. Love it. Um, by the way, uh, tonight for everybody, uh, tonight is the Vinegar Syndrome Flash pre-order that is going live at midnight Eastern. Um, Ryan was not fully aware, uh, so I had to let him know that tonight we are going to be discussing that too. We, we're going to be staying live uh, until that time, so we are happy to discuss that. Hope everybody is here and ready to find out. I think we have a VSU being revealed, two of the titles, one of them being China O'Brien 1 and 2, and then a cinematograph and one more title that we don't know what it is. Uh, so yeah, it'll be a fun night. Oh, crap. <laughs> 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 this is a lot. This is already on, on already like a stacked week, you know. I mean, I lucked yeah. out. It's a great week of of announcements. It's really good. So, and honestly, for the second week of the month, that's pretty rare. It's usually the 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 slowest week of the month. But man, you really lucked out. On I I, I did. I did. <laughs> After last week, I was like, man, I don't know. If there's gonna be much left for me to just talk about. And then all of a sudden. <laughs> They started trickling in, and I was like, dang, all right, cool. Yeah, and then they came in quick near the end of it. So it's yeah. there's kind of a lot to cover tonight. Um, I guess the big thing, uh, let's talk about some pickups and recent watches, my friend, and anything okay. you picked up recently you want to share with everybody? Well, I picked up um, the Arrow, Error 4444s. Nice. So I got those. Um, Scissor Penis. <laughs> <laughs> Run and kill. <laughs> And as mm-hmm. as I mentioned on the Discord, I I must have had a few glasses of wine in me or something because <laughs> I I bought the deluxe one with like the little tin of condoms. So, nice, it's so, a tin of condoms. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's hard to get open, but anyway, there's two in here, and then there's like a neck, another slip, like another slip inside, or another. I don't know. I was like, okay, got that. Then another slip cover altogether. And then three posters. Jeez. Did you and get the I'm one like, with that I... little statue too? Uh-uh. No, no, no. That is for oh, is that is that is in there. I didn't get a statue though. Yeah. Okay, so you got like know. the deluxe minus one, basically. Okay, there you go. There you go. You see, so, you yeah. can feel a little better about it now. Yeah, I was when it showed up, I was like, why did I get all this? <laughs> I don't, I don't need. I just want the movies, man. That's all I was worried about. But oh well, I got all this extra stuff, and now I got condoms in case I need those. But, and a movie uh, called Scissor Penis for Date Night. And it's it's right. Hand the condoms. It's all gonna work out. <laughs> um, I picked up uh, finally Magnificent Warriors. Mm, nice from um, eighty eight films. Uh, I was happy to do that. Also got Once Upon a Time in China, the box set from. Uh, from uh, the sale that that, uh, that 24 hour flash sale that Criterion yep. just did. And another one that I just picked up was finally got Kill Butterfly Kill. Ooh. Um, didn't get it in time for the slipcover, but I, you know, managed to pick it up. Neon Eagle has kind of killed it in their uh, first couple years. And it's not even first couple years their, their first title came out last year geez now yeah I think about that yeah um oh well i have it right here but i can't seem to find it <laughs> um is it right under here yeah it's right under my nose yeah uh which is a uh, great but brutal movie if you've not seen it but unbelievable and it looks amazing the transfer looks fantastic like they're doing a great job yeah they, they are putting their all into it for sure uh also got the uh <clears throat> mondo macabro nice the recent ones that they uh, they put out and i've only been able to watch so far special silencers and boy was it good <laughs> I, everybody is raving about oh, that one man it was so fun like what a wild movie that is <laughs> <laughs> it's so crazy uh yeah good stuff uh, my, those, are, those are just recent pickups my recent one uh is bubble bath from deaf crocodile arrived today with this nice. gorgeous slip and, nice uh, here's the inner art cannot wait to watch this one uh of course when you order direct from them you get one of their little trading cards and i got Ilya muramets in this one nice and it's got some information on the back uh then needed to do some research and i'd been planning on buy this 
buying this forever. And uh, I picked up Alexandra Heller Nicholas's Rape Revenge Films, a critical study, mm. um, needed to look at some information in this. And uh, this book is, I mean, it's wild to have a book on this subject, but for somebody to look at this as such an academic study is an interesting way to approach it. And man, I mean, there was a while and I'm going to, I'm not going to say much else other than this, but Will and I, as we were doing special features, we were worried that we were going to get typecast for doing commentaries on rape revenge films. Uh, <laughs> that was how many we were doing in the early days. Um, and hardly, in fact, I don't think any of those have actually been announced yet. So uh, one of those is for sure being announced before the end of this month. So um, yeah, there's, there's there's a lot of good information. There's a lot of them though. There's a lot of them out there. Yeah, you know, I mean, once you get start really dipping into exploitation films and stuff of the '70s, it's like, okay, here we go. You know, it's like that's that's almost all they are. So um, we've we've run across quite a bit of that on the podcast. So oh yeah, <laughs> so uh, it'd be an interesting book to pick up. I've got one more, but first, Humboldt Whore Honey says, hoping for new Mondo titles soon. For anybody that didn't see, since uh, I didn't post anything yet, Mondo is announcing titles tomorrow, and those are going on sale, I believe, either next week or the following week. So, I, in fact, I think it's two weeks. So you've got two weeks to save up. we got another Mondo bundle coming soon, and one of them is one of the Spanish uh, S classification titles. That's what they're teasing with. <clears throat> so uh, very eager to see what that is. Um, uh <laughs> will checked in and said worried more like hopeful <laughs> uh maddie is working on a podcast about revenge come join us while we're up and running please yeah share the name for sure um last thing i picked up was one that i had uh shied away from due to the price for the longest time and then i sold some things recently and it happened to go on sale i was like well i mean this is just destiny uh so i had to pick up the Paramount Scares Volume 1. Oh, wow. And uh, this thing, for those that didn't see the details, this has five movies in 4K, um, one of them being exclusive to this box set, which is the uh, Sweeney Todd from Tim Burton on 4K. This also comes with an exclusive, and this is really cool, actually, an exclusive Fangoria issue. Wow. And uh, Justin Beam was able to help with a lot of this. He he helped get some people involved to write. He wrote some for this. Um, it's got stickers. It's got a little Paramount pin in here. And it's got five, if you're into like the unique slip covers, all five of the titles are uh, with slip covers that you can't get anywhere else but this box set. But the titles, um, we've got Rosemary's Baby, Pet Cemetery, the original, Crawl from 2019, Smile, and then Sweeney Todd, the Demon Barber of Fleet Street. Um, it's a fun box set. Uh, I, I probably never would have got it if Sweeney Todd wasn't exclusive to this yet. Mm. Um, I'm watching Sweeney Todd hopefully this weekend because I, I liked it when it came out. I want to, I want to check it okay. out again. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Yeah. That's a, it's a pretty good one. Probably, probably one of the the last great Burton. Is that, am I going to get? No, I, I mean, that? I've always loved Burton. I, I don't yeah. think there's any that's, uh, Okay, there's there might be one that's pretty awful, but I, I love most of his stuff. I me too, me too. Grew <laughs> up on his stuff, you know. Um, you watch a lot, so why don't you share what you've been watching recently? Oh, uh, I grabbed a couple of these. I'll just start with this one. Blood rain. <laughs> <laughs> Uve <Uwe> bull. <laughs> yep, I had a gift card. And uh, I guess I decided maybe Blood Rain has improved. And it turns out, you know what, Ryan? It stayed the exact same film. <laughs> Dig. I really hope that with time it would have morphed into something it's, different. It hasn't, as it turns <laughs> out. <laughs> and and then I found, like, I was just watching it and kind of looking things up. And I found out this had $25 million budget. Like, what? On what? How? I mean, I guess they paid the cast because Ben Kingsley's in it. I mean, I can't, I just, I don't understand. And he, then he got an even bigger budget after this because um, in the name of the King, he, he did that one. And that was like a $60 million budget. And that's with uh, Jason Statham. And now his films are getting 4k releases, right? 4k. <laughs> I mean, look, 
I knew what I was getting into. I'm the one buying Blood Rain in 4K, you know. From I Massacre understood. Video specifically. A Massacre Video, exactly. So I was like, I know what I'm getting into, but who knows? Maybe this could be really fun. As it turns out, it was still just Blood Rain. But <laughs> speaking of fun, though, <laughs> um, uh, is I, I I got I watched Like and Colony. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this one or not. I've not yet. Uh, I did just get it recently, so I, I'm it curious to see what you thought. Is I'm not a huge uh, shot on video fan, but this one is just absolutely bonkers. Like there, this one defies description. It's just crazy. Have you watched uh, any of the uh, Visual Vengeance titles yet? I've only watched a handful. I haven't watched tons of these, and this one's making me want to kind of get more of them because th 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 this is this was pretty damn fun. And the best part was there was an interview with the director. And what I love about physical media is that you get to like see this guy was like, I, I made a crappy movie. I don't and nobody knew anything about it. And all of a sudden people started getting into it and people like it. I don't know. <laughs> like it's a great interview. And it was it just made me even more charmed by this movie. This guy was like, I don't know. I was just trying nice. to make a movie. And then like I didn't think it'd go anywhere. And then it took off. So uh, I really had, had a lot of fun with Liking Colony. That was a good one. I agree with Brendan. If you don't have it yet, pick up their uh, release of Bloody Muscle Bodybuilder oh, in Hell. That's the one I have. The other one I have. We, and nice. I've watched that several times. It's that one's a blast. So fun. In fact, I showed a bunch of buddies came over and I showed that as like a pre feature because nice. like, this thing is like a, you got to, that's just, you got to see it. You can't, ex you can't explain it. It's not at all. Yeah, it's a yeah. great one. It's a super good one. Um, I was super late on this one, Tai Chi Master. Um, this is the DVD. I also picked up the like double Blu-ray as well, but um, I bought this oh. at a record store for next to nothing. Uh, but this is the original DVD, which nice. has uh, a, a commentary from you know a former employee of Miramax that maybe ah. is a persona <laughs> non grata, but you know still good choice. Yeah, I mean, but <laughs> the movie itself I had not seen, and I can't believe right. this was like right in the time when I was heavily into like Hong Kong cinema and somehow I, I totally miss this one. And so uh, this film is fantastic. If you haven't seen it, it's absolutely worth uh, getting and, and get the Blu-ray. The Blu-ray will have all the other special features, just not the commentary. And you if I remember right, the, the double that was from Ronin flicks, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, Ronin right, flicks used to be like a right behind me. and and release stuff all the time. I, I don't know what has happened. They've they've quieted down a lot, but then all of a sudden that thing got announced. And I'm I'm just glad they're putting it out. Yeah, me too. I've ordered from them a bunch, and I'm you know, I don't I don't know what why it's so sporadic. Their Haunt release was pretty cool. Yes. So I mean they've they put out some really cool stuff. Uh, two more here. Uh, the Rock of Fire Explosion. Nice. What do you think? <laughs> it's it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. It's pretty great. I mean, I I think I may have I think I pretty much only came in on, on Chuck E. Cheese, but I thought mm. this was pretty fascinating. Um, I wish it had expanded a bit more in terms of like how the business started and bit got a bit more into like what happened, how Chuck E. Cheese came in. It really concentrates on such a small amount right. of people. Um, so scope wise, it's small, but it's still very interesting and you know, um, you know, you, if people in their obsessions and collecting, like, I get it, <laughs> you know. Um, and then lastly, Equilibrium. Okay. <laughs> Got this DVD for next to nothing. <laughs> and um, forget the Matrix, they say on the box. You know what won't let you forget the Matrix? This movie. Because it's very much about the Matrix. It's very <laughs> post-Matrix. <laughs> I think it's like 2001 and a really interesting to like think of Christian Bale's career of, around that time. He was still, he had done American psycho, but he was still pretty much trying to like find where he was going to go. So he really picked some odd movies and especially right. equilibrium, uh, an odd movie, sort of a, a weird sci-fi kind of 1984 kind of situation. And very much influenced by by the matrix nice so. 
Uh, it has been a busy week for me, so I've watched a grand total of one movies. Oh, okay. That's not good grammar, um, but uh, it was on purpose. Um, the, the one movie, though, I made it a great one. Um, I finally got to a, a three-and-a-half-year-old disc that I've been dying to watch for three-and-a-half years. Uh, Arrow's release of Verses from 2000, and uh, that movie is that amazing. movie is special. Um, yeah, real good. Like, first off, uh, it, it is very difficult to describe because by the eighth minute, you've already seen, I think, seven genres. Yeah. Uh, and and yeah. in the good in a good way, not in a bad oh, yeah. way at all. Uh, then after that, uh, there it's a messy movie. There's a whole lot of plot. The plot doesn't make much sense through most of it. And somehow it's it doesn't still matter. A- it's a four and a half star movie for me. Like yeah, everything yeah. about it is fun. There's a f- like multiple 50 cal machine gun fights. How? Okay. Uh, that doesn't have, I mean, <laughs> sure. I got it. But the best thing, I mean, you already mentioned it. So I kind of want to highlight the reason why we have this show is because physical media is so damn important. That release of versus has, tons of special features it has the ultimate verses which is an extra i think it was like 13 minutes on top of the original version and it's not just 13 extra minutes they went and changed some of them as well so it's actually Mm. way more than 13 minutes of footage that was added um it's got commentary it's got uh some essay stuff on it i believe but the big thing the booklet in that has a an interview with the director which if you've never seen verses it's the same director that did midnight me train and it's that level of bonkers on the side of a mountain. So you, you might see what you're getting into. Uh, but beyond that, it's got like the story of how they made this movie. And it is an incredible story to find out. They, I think they had $50,000 or $30,000, went and spent that all making the movie in like the first four days, and then had to earn the money to shoot the next day every single night after that. And they shot for months. And then beyond that, there was like, they're filming on the side of this mountain and then snow was coming in. So they had to pack everything up and move to some other random ass mountain and go finish the movie. I I mean, so much about this is just an improbability that could ever get made, let alone released, let alone be good enough for people to love 25 years later. And here we are. Like, that movie is incredible. Love it. Absolutely love it. Um, yeah it's so good i totally agree glad you enjoy it uh the big thing uh for anybody that did not see the interview with ryan that was posted oh gosh like six weeks ago now seven my life has been a blur for the last month and a half so it might have been like four years ago um uh, (laughs) when when ryan was on the channel recently uh we discussed his podcast the new world pictures podcast but Mm -hmm. stuff has been happening since then what's been going on on the podcast uh gosh oh now um i've been thinking just about physical releases um (laughs) um, (laughs) it's it's we've just been you know going through more movies uh um uh you know new world pictures movies specifically uh we had a great interview with um the director of the american scenes of godzilla 1985 um and i put out a couple video couple videos i'm trying to put together like a long longer video of that interview because we actually interviewed him twice and spliced that all together over two interviews. Oh. Um, his name is RJ Kaiser, and he had a long career at New World. So we spoke to him about all of his career. And then I was like, we only get like 20 minutes or so about Godzilla, and we're about to talk about that movie. Let's let's get another, you know, another go. And he was so gracious, and we spoke for at length. I mean, the guy's just a really cool guy, really interesting. So I, I kind of put a lot of those uh, together and put together a little bit of an extended version on our YouTube page. And somebody was very nice and said, like, this is the closest we'll get to, like, special features for this movie because they're never going to release that on 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 any sort of physical media. Uh, Toho is never going to let that one out. So uh, so that was really cool. So that was really cool and really nice to do. And then uh, we were we're we're talking about sports movies here in March, March Madness. So we've been going through those and uh, we're going to have our annual um, Roger Corman birthday special coming up where we watch some of his movies hopefully we're going to have a guest trying to work on that right now for it so somebody who's interviewed him and talked with roger so we'll see what how it goes there uh so you know going things are going well things are going well you know um yeah yeah it's been a lot it's been a lot of fun we're having a good time as usual and uh yeah it's it's been a blast definitely keeping us busy i i mean 
I, I I'm like dreaming of the day that uh you send me a message and say, Hey, don't tell anybody, but Rogers can be on the show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That would be incredible. That would be incredible. Yeah. I feel like uh, we are going to try to make a move on that, uh, you know, pretty soon uh, just because, you know, he's, 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 he's getting up there in years. So yeah. like uh, we, we should, we might as well try to strike while the iron's hot. So we may reach out to him. He follows us on Twitter. So nice. That's pretty cool. Or whoever runs his twitter account <laughs> but nonetheless so like uh so yeah we we may reach out to him just because it's like you know we would love to talk with him and it would be great for me uh because i'm writing a book about new world pictures um so i would i need to for the book so it's right. another great excuse to talk to the guy double whammy so, yeah uh big thing uh over the last 24 hours on physical media did you see the clip from uh jimmy fallon show last night Oh, uh, yes. The one uh, uh, with uh, Carrie. Yeah. Carrie yeah, Coon was on the show and uh, he he starts talking to her and then she goes in to say that we have 10,000 Blu-rays at home. And uh, Jimmy Fallon responds by saying, what? Why? Haven't you heard of the Internet? And uh, man, every single physical media channel and, and label has been sharing this and just like praising this person. Yep. And to be fair. She deserves all the praise in the world. Like, sure. if you go look at her on Twitter, she is sharing boutique pickups, sharing what discs they watched last year, uh, praising some of these releases. She's clearly region free, which is nice. Um, I mean, it, it was a nice sign. But the biggest thing through the entire clip for DVD Beaver to get a shout out on The Tonight <laughs> Show, that is legendary. Yeah, that's wild. That's wild. <laughs> yeah, her husband Tracy Letts, who's a playwright, he's apparently against streaming. Yep. And he is not on he's not on social media as far as I can tell. And so and she'll have like tweets where she's like date night and then she'll list just the name of the movie. It's all text and then yep. she'll just like put like who put out the release. And she had one where she didn't put like who made it and then she so replied to herself with like at Kino Lorber. And I'm like <laughs> <laughs> Mike, bless you, bless you. I it was an instant follow. I was like, oh, I got to see what she's what she and Tracy are up to, because um, yeah, that was that was really cool. I uh, I would love to see the analytics behind DVD Beaver's website, how they were getting right, what a bump they a low got, amount of hits, and then last night they had to have skyrocketed totally twenty four totally. hours. <laughs> had to, had to. Oh man! Uh, anything else going on in your world? Any upcoming episode that you want to highlight? Uh, uh, not an you know upcoming about? episode, but I will mention tomorrow. Um, there's a movie called The Prank that is opening. Uh, it's only like in the, like it's not opening uh, that wide, so I'm not sure like where it will if it will be in everybody's city. But um, it is a movie with uh, Rita Moreno, and it's kind of like a horror comedy. And I might pop up in it for like a minute, so go see it. Go check it out. Yeah. Yeah. I was just at the premiere last night. So it was really cool. And it was fun to fun to see. So open well, opens up tomorrow. Go check it out. And then it'll it's not streaming at the moment. But if you don't, if you can't see it in your town, then when it's on streaming, watch it. <laughs> you have been assigned to yeah. your homework. <laughs> this is necessary, guys. Rent um, it. You know, make sure they get their money back. Make sure they bring me back some, uh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, tonight we have a ton of announcements to go over. So are you oh, yeah. are, are you ready for this, sir? I'm not ready, but let's do it. Well, uh, first up on the docket, um, if you notice, we are both wearing Severin Films t-shirts, uh, Enigma, and then the, the Severin Halloween shirt from last year. So let's start with some Severin. Let's do uh, it. And my God, this slate surprised the hell out of me. Uh, so first, these are all coming in April. If you buy them from the Severn website, I believe they're coming in May if you get them as the wide release. Uh, but first, we are getting the Great Alligator from Sergio Martino on 4K. Um, yeah. This previously had a Code Red release. And uh, that is a little older than uh, you would think because it was released... Oh gosh, I think that one was like a 2014. Yeah, or somewhere. Yeah, somewhere around uh, there. 2017. Sorry. Uh, so a big seven year uh, gap in between releases for this movie, but um, Severn went all out on this entire slate. So uh, the first disc on this, we got a 4K disc and then a trailer, and that's it. The second disc, though, 
Blu-ray and special features for this. So the, the feature is on the second disc if you only have a Blu-ray player. They have an interview with Sergio Martino on here, interview with the actress uh, Silvia Colatina, interview with the camera operator, interview with the production designer, the underwater camera operator, um, three friends mm-hmm. and an alligator is a discussion with a whole bunch of people involved with the film, and then a video essay by Lee Gambin, who's been on the channel. Um, he has done a lot of stuff for Animal Attacks movies, and uh, supposedly this is a an incredible visual essay. Cannot wait to see this. Um, the Great Alligator, have you ever seen this one? I sure did. Yeah, um, I watched it twice, but the first time I watched it really late at night and uh, I was not prepared for the lack of alligator for like <laughs> the first 45 minutes to an hour. And I was like too tired and I was like, I don't know, pick this up later. And then I forgot to pick it up and, and I but I rewatched it finally. And uh, once it once if you know going in, there's not a lot of alligator. It's still a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun stuff going on. Mel Ferrer is in it. Um Sergio Martino uh, is, a, is a great director. Um, he directed Island of the Fishmen, released by New World Pictures as Something Waits in the Dark, a.k.a. then re-released as Screamers <laughs> when Jim Wynorski finally joined New World Pictures in their marketing department. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I watched this one, and like it's it's the last half hour, too, is great. Uh, yeah. So I don't want to spoil anything about the effects, but they're something special. And I'm very curious to see this in 4K. And it's, it's. Uh, I don't know if it's if it's better than the Killer Crocodile. Did you see those from Severin? I did not watch those ones yet. The what is the, the one that uh, Synapse released? Um, shoot, is that just called Crocodile? Yeah. I, I okay, I so. watched that one. That one, I think that one's a Thai film. Um, that one was pretty damn. Fun. Yes, you're right. That is a Thai film. I haven't seen that one, but the, but the Killer Crocodile one and two that they released is uh, fantastic. It's such a good. It's such a. It's another Italian movie. It was the only reason why it's a basis of comparison. But the Great Alligator is still like a pretty fun movie. Um, you just have to be prepared that alligators don't jump in there right away. So, <laughs> <laughs> funny enough, uh, when this first got released on Blue, I watched it. Uh, like a month after the release and there was not very many um, reviews out for it yet. So I had not heard that there was a lack of alligator and we were mm. watching this and I, I don't remember who watched it with me, but about halfway through, they made the obvious joke and said, did you say this was called the great alligator? This should be called the <laughs> late alligator. And I was like, yeah. that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. So I've been, I've been calling this the late alligator ever since then. It, it, it makes up for the lack of alligator in the last half hour where it kind of, you know, goes a little nuts, but, yeah, I mean, you, we could have had a little bit more uh, alligator action in the first hour of the movie. Wouldn't it hurt. Wouldn't it hurt anything. Yeah, but I mean, it's still good. It's Sergio Martino, so it's pretty. I, I'm still, you know, I, I, I will probably pick this one up. So I, I'm excited to see this in 4K, uh, but probably not as excited as I am to see Butcher Baker Nightmare Maker, which is a genuinely great movie. Uh, this is from 1981. Severin is putting this out on 4K as well. Still the same release date. They've got some really good art on this, which is very different mm. than the art that we've yeah, had on the blue. Awesome. Uh, it's super retro, and man, it this is gonna look good. Uh, this one, of course, we've got uh, Jimmy Mc, Jimmy McNichol starring in this, and we've got an audio commentary with Jimmy himself. We got another audio commentary with uh, a couple of individuals from the film, moderated by Nathaniel Thompson, who's been on the channel before as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And then that's not even it. We got a third audio commentary on this with the co-producer and unit production manager. Uh, and then, of course, on the Blu-ray, we've got even more. We've got multiple interviews, one with Bo Svensson. Um, we've got some uh, trailers. Uh, we, we've got just everything like th- they are going all out on these um, I'm sure you've seen this one too what do you think about this one yeah I have seen it and um, it, you have to if you haven't seen it you need to watch this for the Susan Terrell performance because it is something else she is so fantastic uh, yes dude McMahon Island the Fishman and Screamers are the same movie um, Jim Wynorski made a, tra- a trailer for the movie when they were trying to resell it. Roger Corman never, if it didn't make money the first time, he retitles it and puts it back out. And Jim Wynorski made a trailer and he said, you'll see men w- with their skin turned inside out in the trailer. And everybody was like, yeah, all right. And they went to see it <laughs> and they saw Screamers, but it didn't have that. And then they had to pull all those and then try to see if they could put the footage from the trailer into the movie. So yeah, Screamers and Island of the Fishmen are the same. So many different releases for that particular movie. There's released on like uh, I think Wicked Vision is how I have the yep. original Italian one. 
Then uh, I just picked up the uh, out of print uh, Blu-ray that was put out for Screamers. So that's on its way. So like hopefully, and then I think uh, Full Moon has released it. But in any case, yep. Susan Tyrell, she's amazing in this movie. And um, she, of course, from the first two Angel films released by New World Pictures right after this. But her performance is unreal in this movie. She, it's it, This may be her quintessential performance, I feel like. Um, and uh, Jimmy McNichol also from a new world movie called uh, Smokey Bites the Dust, which he did either I think right <laughs> after this, um, after this movie he did that one, and it's that's a real wild one of just other car crash footage Corman had from other movies that he just stitched together a new narrative and included oh, all that it. footage and just skeleton together a new movie. <laughs> But um, it's a very Wynorski move too. <laughs> sure. Well, Wynorski <laughs> learned from the best, <laughs> right? Um, but this movie is much better than the than that. <laughs> this, <laughs> this, and even Jimmy McNichol is much better in this as well. Like if this kid could have just been had just been free to play basketball. Uh, <laughs> also, a great performance from an early performance from Bill Paxton as well, who also plays his uh, scheming uh, rival on his basketball team. Yep. Good, good stuff. Uh, then the third title is uh, The Incredible Kathy's Curse, which uh, I happen to love. It's a cheesy little Canucksploitation it is. riff yeah. on The Exorcist. Um, I, I first saw this, uh, gosh, Severn's old release of this. Again, this was probably another six or seven year old disc. And uh, I, I think I got the disc for like $8 in a sale in like 2018. And it's it's not uh amazing but man yeah. is it fun uh very cheesy and as you can tell from the picture if you're watching live this uh this severin <laughs> oh man I that, mean... that box is like ah oh. <laughs> wow uh it's, it's, so it's calling me it's calling me <laughs> uh yeah they, they went all out light up box for a 4k so cool. release of kathy's so curse cool. And whoever could have expected Kathy's curse to get a 4k release. Yeah. It's a wild movie. If you put um, on a Venn diagram, you put exorcist and Amityville horror and that what, what comes out in the Venn diagram is Kathy's curse. <laughs> um, yeah. With some wild snakes happening and lots of other <laughs> weird, some very weird stuff. Um, I didn't love the film as much, but it's certainly a good little, like you said, it's a very solid can exploitation. Yep. Uh, and certainly a very solid like exorcist. I mean, this comes out before Amityville horror, to be honest, but um, I still felt like it had a lot of those kind of elements to it. It's obviously more of an ex exorcist, you know, riff than, than uh, Amityville because it hadn't been made yet. But that this box, I mean, I saw that and I was like, you know what? I may just need to, get this one regardless because that box is unbelievable so well, cool. and the, love the, the cool art thing on it. even if you already have the blu-ray and don't want to upgrade you can buy just the box which is a very i mean to be fair which is a very not severin thing normally these yeah. would be limited to something but they went immediately into like hey we we are totally open for everybody if you want to buy the box just come buy the box um, and the cool thing too, they went all in on making it last forever because you can replace the battery easily. That is rare. Wow. And kudos to Severin. Wow. Um, this is this is a super cool that's, move. I'm, that's really cool. I, I'm glad they're doing it like that. And it's it's a common thing for for this film because uh, one of the gimmicks for eight years was the light up eyes. They've done pins. They've done. I think I think there was a VHX box maybe that that did this for this title long time ago mm -hmm. but um mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah that it's yeah that you're right to have this much work putting into kathy's curse is just like i mean hats off guys that yeah. is i mean what love was put into this release that's it's crazy it's so great it's a lot uh keith is pointing out nothing against the film but doing 4k reissues means we aren't getting something new um here's the thing uh and I, I'm not saying this definitively, but seeing behind the curtains for some of these labels, that's not necessarily the case. Uh, the fact that we're getting four in a month, they still had to pay a shit ton of money to put these on 4K. Yeah. And it's not necessarily taking the place of other licenses. It's because they've done the work on these titles and they probably, I believe all four got new extras, if I remember right. So we, we they are still producing new stuff for them. But beyond that, 
they're working on, I mean, I can tell you right now from personal experience, they are working on a lot of stuff behind the scenes that is going to blow some minds. That's all new. Um, I, I, I really hope you understand it's not replacing new things. It's just in addition to, yes, there was not new titles announced necessarily, although they're new to Severin. There's a yeah, couple of that... Yeah, it's new to Severin. This is like right. a the code, like a lot of code red. We're finally seeing who's picking up some of the code red titles. I think it's going to be a fairly well dispersed, but you know, those titles are now pretty much all mostly out of print. So like right. I mean, this is really just picking those up and then giving them extra to get a 4K, you know, of great alligator. Right. I mean, my lord. So, uh, and Kathy's curse. I mean, if they still have, if they still have the rights to the movie, I mean, why not upgrade? Why, why not? Why not? They're yeah. not. The, they're not the first label to do it. That's for sure. Well, and beyond that, it's not like they released the Blu-ray 18 months ago, and this is a cash grab right, or anything. Right. This yeah, yeah, they're not Scream long... Factory. So, they're... <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Uh, then The Devil's Honey, the Lucio Fulci film, is getting a 4K upgrade from Severin. And uh, they they went all in on the artwork that we've come to know and love over the last handful of years. Uh, this one is going to have two discs. we got a 4K disc and a Blu-ray disc. We've got interviews on the uh, Blu-ray disc. We've got Stephen Thrower uh, talking about The Devil's Honey. And then an audio essay by Troy Howarth, author of Splintered Visions, of course. Uh, who wrote on Lucio Fulci? We've got the alternate opening, and then uh, if you want the slip, you got to buy it from Severin because nowhere else would have it. Um, yeah, is there is there a commentary at all or no? Uh, I don't think there is on this. So one. They they pretty much ported everything over from this. It's just getting the 4K up, right? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, uh, one of the horniest movies Fulci has ever done, and yet not the sleaziest. So. Yep. Well done to you, Mr. Fulci. Um, <laughs> but an extremely horny movie that will make you look at, you'll never look at the saxophone the same way again. Uh, it's not, uh, it's not even top five Fulci for me, but even, even, mm, no, even mid tier Fulci is still pretty fun. And, you know, t this is another one where like, I could hear that criticism and I thought similarly, like they're not doing anything too different. They're just doing a four, a 4k, but like Severin is how this one gets even out on Blu-ray. Right. This thing was almost lost. This was yep. extremely hard to find and se until Severin put it out on Blu-ray. And so now they're doing a nice, you know, 4K upgrade. So, I mean, if you want to see all those boobs in 4K, I mean, this is the way to do it. <laughs> you'll never you'll never see this much nudity <laughs> well there's you could there's other movies you can get in 4k i mean that are that they'll have more nudity but boy there's a lot of nudity in this this one is uh this is not that's not one for family movie night so don't yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> but uh still a, an interesting one you know fulci is always is always interesting he always does something unique with his movies literally always it is i mean it, it's baffling to me that he's able to pull off what he pulls off i i'm i'm stoked on it yeah uh then we got a question here from cinema jimbo on uh the batteries are you sure about the batteries for kathy's curse early press release said couldn't be replaced but would last between one to ten years uh, well, if you go and look on their um, uh, website right now, uh, hmm. <laughs> they uh, they they updated it because if you look on what I had posted, I copied this from their website immediately. Um, they all they mentioned before was this part. Uh, these are the batteries, and they can be replaced. So I guess yeah, they've updated it now. They can't be replaced. That's upsetting. Oh, hmm. that's a bummer. That's a bummer, especially if you're just buying just the box. Yeah. So mm. you can replace them, but you damage the inside with it. Got it. Got it. That kind of makes sense because I don't know how you would be able to, unless they have it on the bottom. Like, yeah. it depends. It's, it's, it would be kind of hard. I don't know. Or if it's recessed somewhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, question from Jake. Is the pre-order for next homegrown horse set supposed to go up tonight? Maybe we we don't know. I mean, that could be something they're revealing. I'm not sure. I know We're China O'Brien. China O'Brien will be revealed. One other will be revealed, and then the VSU and a cinematograph. That's a lot. Um. Yeah. Sorry about the batteries thing. I didn't realize they updated it. Thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Um. And then the crazy thing, they also had this bundle that they put up here, uh, the March Madness bundle, where you can get all four of the releases plus a postcard 
uh, that was autographed for the Devil's Honey. This thing sold out so quickly uh, wow. that the link that I have attached to this was not working for people, and they thought I did something wrong. And I went, "No, they just they took the bundle down." But uh, now you can get the uh, the the just the disc bundle, which is just the four titles, um, no postcard that's autographed, but it's still the same price, hundred and fifty eight dollars. Hmm. Okay. Well, kudos to everybody that got that got in on that on that deal and got a little something extra. Dave says, "Would be good to see someone do a tier list of Fulci films." I might have to do that. Mm, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I. I <sighs> There's, I think uh, there's only one I haven't seen yet, but, uh, but yeah, I'd be curious about that too. That'd be a fun one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> some of these comments. <laughs> I've not seen the comments. I'm sorry. Uh, you, if on the right side of your screen, if you click on comments, you can see them. Oh, okay, great. I'll do that. Uh, I, I'm laughing specifically. Oh, got saying, it, got this it. is Severin's okay. way of saying, get ready for Kathy's curse in 8k in 2034. Mm-hmm. Uh, Clearly mm-hmm. not happening, obviously. Uh, yes, the early bird got the worm there, Stan, of course. But not only was it the early bird, it was like the jump on it the moment it's available birds. Uh, Wave said I would watch that video on Fulci. Nice. Yeah. The Conquest has got to be top. Got to be in the top. <laughs> if you if you don't put Conquest up there, you don't I mean, it's the movie that broke him. It, that well, broke that, and it's the movie that uh, made Stock and Vaseline go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> people that have it, never seen it are going to think that was dirty it was no, not dirty. <laughs> it's, not. it's i love that movie it's i love that one man the the lens on that camera though oh it's yeah just somebody get, get please get a kleenex just wipe that thing it's crazy <laughs> all right Lord. Moving right along, one of the uh, Kino announcements, they announced that Botany Bay was coming soon on Blu-ray. This is from 1953. Got a 4K scan from Paramount in 2022. Uh, I believe this had a previous release through Imprint, if I remember right. I think it was in a box set. Uh, let me make sure I'm correct. There. Or, it was not in a, uh, it wasn't a box set. It was the directed by John Farrow box set. Okay, apparently I'm frozen. Oh, and Stan said I was frozen. No, I think he meant me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not confusing at all. <laughs> I tried to clear it up for a bit, but Chad, but that's all right. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. <laughs> uh, Love this. Oh, I, I, a young Brian Cranston. That is very kind. That's very kind. <laughs> like a Malcolm in the Middle, Brian Cranston. Um, considering I'm probably, uh, I'm probably closer to his age. That's very kind of you. Um, Bonnie Bay. Yeah. Uh, I've not, never seen this one. James Mason though. He's good. Yeah. Alan Ladd, you know, that little shorty, that little shorty, that little sweet shorty. <laughs> what a lad. Uh, <laughs> next coming soon on 4k from them. Uh, we got Hatari with John Wayne and, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Although I will say Howard Hawks can direct the hell out of a movie. Yeah, this is one I've not seen, but obviously seen like seen this movie, like the boxes, like in video stores and stuff throughout my life and just never seen it. So these are like what Kino is putting out this just as a I know we're not done with them, but these were all ones where I'm like, hmm, when the sale comes, these I could pick these up. I've not seen a lot of these. Yeah, again, I don't know how Kino gets away with announcing like 11 titles a week and life just carries on like that's not wild. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's why, uh, if you didn't see in the description, we're talking about Kino Lorber after this tonight. We're going to share some of our that's favorites right. and uh, right. maybe even have a couple uh, honorable mentions. But uh, because of that and because of the Vinegar Syndrome announcements tonight, we got to we gotta rush through this a little bit. Hatari is uh, okay. Up... Thank you, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> next up, May 7th Early on review. Blue. Uh, they are finally putting out the, I believe this is pronounced Philo Vance Collection. Uh, might be Philo Vance. Uh, this was announced literally almost a year ago, and now they're finally putting this out. Brand new 4K restorations of the Canary murder case and the Green murder case, and a 2K restoration of the Benson murder case. We got new audio commentaries for two of these with Kim Newman and Barry Forshaw, and then another new audio commentary by Jason A. Nye. Um, just yeah, to could... go ahead, yeah, I heard they I put some of the Colombo uh, uh, commentaries on this one just to kind of. 
<laughs> They're going to release everything on completely <laughs> unaffiliated titles. Just to do something with them, you know? I mean, they're just sitting and sitting around in somebody's hard drive, so. <laughs> uh, we got a question. Real question is, how does Kino get an audio commentary on all 30-plus releases every month? That's a good point. That is a good point. They do a lot of work. That's got to be a lot of they do. Yeah. Uh, hey, speaking of somebody that does a lot of work, these guys have not been doing a lot of work. No. Uh, <laughs> Fractured Visions has finally emerged from their slumber. April 29th, they are releasing Doberman on Blu-ray in the UK. Uh, this one, I believe, was teased from them like a year ago. And uh, then they just went into hibernation. And now they are officially back. Um, we are getting this. It's got a new interview with the director on here. We get a new interview with the cinematographer, new interview with the visual <laughs> effects artist, artist, uh, new audio commentary with Mike Leader and Arna Venema on Doberman. That's pretty rad. Uh, and then we got a video essay by Zoe Rose Smith, um, and then a newly edited making of doc on this. Um, Doberman, I've not seen in years. Have you seen this one? No, no. And I heard this is one of those like uh, Tarantino, like once, once everybody was, was really yep. into. Pulp Fiction, there was a kind of a wave of like Tarantino ripoffs, uh, which is ironic, but still that's it happened. And I saw a lot of them. I've not seen Doberman. And so I looked into this one because I've, I've got a lot of the Fractured Vision stuff and I really like yeah. what they do. I think they do a really good job. And I was like you going, where are they? Did they do? I thought they'd just given up a tiny little Welsh label. And um, they even had like a, a podcast for a bit. Yeah, <clears throat> but but that is I don't think they put out anything on that either. So so I'm nope. I'm very curious about this one. There was nothing on their social media at all since January of 2023. So this this is like a big reemergence, and then I believe they are also uh, teasing another Asian uh, release coming okay. up soon. So yeah, hopefully something from that as well, and it's not just one and done for a while. Uh, let's see. Ronnie is asking, I don't think we've had a keynote sale for a while. Anyone know if there's one coming up soon? There absolutely is one coming up soon. Usually they, they do, they do a November sale and then a December sale, and then they sleep for like two months or two and a half months. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we had one in March, uh, but more likely is we'll probably get the first one in April if we don't. Uh, yes, John, this will likely be locked region B. Yeah. All their other releases were region B. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, this is not an announcement, but I put up an interview this week with Nico B from Cult Epics. Uh, there's not a lot that I can say to prepare people for this interview. I don't know if you watched it, Ryan, but no, not yet. Um, th this is a, a wild interview. Uh, we discussed some of the short films that he made, um, including the one with uh, the. <laughs> Roz Williams, who is from Christian Death, and yeah, uh, R.I.P. The story behind what they did in that short was wild. I mean, we're talking. Ooh. He tells the story of a fan of Roz's that came and said, "You can do anything to me, but kill me." Oh, wow! Yeah, yeah. some weird. Um, I I saw uh, not Christian Death, but I saw his next band, Shadow Project. So. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm very curious about that, and definitely that's a weird, some weird fans. Christian Death <laughs> got a lot uh, of weird fans. Cool Epics has been around literally for over 30 years. This one is an interesting one. Uh, go check it out if you have not, please. It is, um, it is wild. I will say this is the first one where the individual could not do video, so uh, it's audio only. I did put mm. some visuals on it, so you had something to look at. But um, man, <laughs> recommend this one. I'm normally not so heavy on my stuff, but. Uh, this oh. is one that you might want to go give a listen no, to. No, I'm going to check that out. Uh, next up, Film Masters, July 23rd. A Blu-ray of The Crippled Masters from 1979 is coming. Um, this is one uh, that has been on, uh, I, I think it was on TCM last year, and it had a little bit of a reemergence. This is one that was on like late night TV in the 90s all the time. There was an old DVD that a lot of people still have. Uh, this is a title that nobody expected this to ever make a reemergence on Blu-ray. And yet here we are newly restored from original 35 millimeter archival uh, elements. And um, it is supposedly just going to be the dubbed version. You're not going to get the original Mandarin with mm -hmm. uh, subtitles on that, but 
Uh, this one has a commentary by the important cinema club, Mr. Justin DeClue over there. Uh, new documentary by Ballyhoo is on this one as well. And then we've got a little booklet that's going to be in this. This release looks great. If you haven't seen the trailer, highly recommend go checking this out. Yeah, this this is a great movie, and, and uh, it's so wild. And I'm very excited for this one because I did not see this one coming at all. And uh, I, Film Masters has really been killing it too. Like, yeah, uh, I, I and I'm surprised that they got a hold of this one. I know they usually do um, more like stuff that is like out of the public or in the public domain. And yep. I'm not sure this is in the public domain, but maybe it is. The version I saw was also um, it was also dubbed, so I imagine it's the same version, but it yep. looked like hell. So to see this all cleaned up, they do such a good job. I think they do a lot of stuff through UCLA Film Archive, and uh, like they do some incredible. Uh, <laughs> I just saw Will's comment about them having good taste <laughs> in extras. <clears throat> you guys, <clears throat> you guys aren't on this though, right? Not on this one. Uh, we were on the Swiss Conspiracy, and we may or may not be currently working on something else for them. Okay, okay. Well, I'm, I, nonetheless, I'm picking up pretty much everything they're doing because they are. It's hard. Really, not to. they're yeah, they got great stuff. So, uh, uh, and this is a pretty fun movie if you haven't seen it. Uh, just the trailer alone will probably get you pretty hyped up on it. Um, Sibner is saying, I always hear mixed things about cult epic. Some people really trash the transfers. Others say they're overreacting. Honestly, some of the transfers are not great, um, but some of them are impeccable. It's it's one of those labels where they are at the mercy of what they can get their hands on, and they're not doing a ton of restoration work themselves, I don't believe. So the biggest thing, and you'll hear Nico say this in the interview, is he just... He just wants you to be able to see the movie. Um, if that means mm -hmm. the elements are trash, at, at least you'll be able to see the film. Right. That's the big thing. Uh, next up, though. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, so April 16th, Universal is putting out Half-Baked Totally mm -hmm. High, starring David Keckner of all people. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. uh, man, I got to say, uh, this is a weird thing for me. Um, I posted this announcement. I have had a handful of, of my post. I, I hate using this phrase, so nobody roast this, please. Uh, go viral. And on Facebook, this post has had like 350 shares. And I am getting, since we sat down to do this show, uh, what was that number there? I've gotten 43 more comments on this post. Oh, no. And I hate to say this, almost every single comment on this is the most vitriolic hateful like stoners from 2003 just absolutely pissed that anybody would ruin the reputation mm -hmm. of half baked starring dave chappelle <laughs> yeah well he wasn't in the original so you know but he's coming in to <laughs> close out the franchise and bless him for doing that this is uh, uh we're finally going to get the story completed <laughs> which i'm i'm excited for <laughs> I, if you want to laugh and, and you're on Facebook, please go look up that post I and will. read through some I of will. the comments. Because <laughs> my God, like there are people I've I've had to delete a couple comments because they were oh no past the borderline of being incredibly uh, inappropriate. Um, but look at look at that art. Yeah, that this I, is going to be a winner, guys. Calm down. Yes, exactly. <laughs> this is. I mean, they great. spent at least twelve seconds um, typing <laughs> I mean, into AI, right? Yeah, this is going to go really well. There's no way this doesn't succeed. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I had never even heard about this, and I love, I did, I did love the first one. It Who did hit me yeah. at that time. Uh, so, I mean, <laughs> Will is also a big fan because he's doing tons of he's he's <laughs> <laughs> he's quoting the movie. Um, this it, it is a very highly quotable movie, and it's so good. And I'm this just feels like. I can't. I can't stop laughing from it. I'm still laughing I, since I've seen this picture uh, we, on your announcements. I was like, no, this is such a bad idea. This is, but I love. I, I, I don't know. Will I watch it? Probably. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's enough of half page. <laughs> totally high this time. 
<laughs> uh, May 7th, Kino is releasing Republic Pictures Horror Collection from 1944 to 46. This is going to be HD Masters by uh, Paramount Pictures from 4K scans on these. We got one new commentary by Stephen Bissett. We've got a commentary by Tim Lucas on here, and then a new commentary for The Catman of Paris by David Del Val and Miles Hunter. New commentary for Valley of the Zombies by David Del Val and Miles Hunter as well. And then some other archival commentaries that were on previous releases of these. Um, some of these titles, in fact, I, I, if I remember right, I believe all of them have been released previously in the last couple of years, but uh, not in the U.S., so now now they are here and uh i mean this looks like a good little collection for kino I'm, I'm sure this will do very well for them yeah yeah this is one of those that i i saw and i was like would i buy this new i'm not sure but talk to me when that sale pops up right <laughs> probably gonna put that in the cart <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Paul says, great films in the Republic Pictures collection. Absolutely loved Catman of Paris and Valley of the Zombies was phenomenal. Tony says, this is going to be a great set, including Catman of Paris that Imprint also put out. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is, uh, I haven't seen a lot of these, so I'm excited for it. Uh, next one, May 28th, Metrograph Pictures uh, is going to be putting out The French from 1982. This will be still uh, distributed by Kino, so you should be able to pick this up from their site. Um, this is a documentary. Uh, it says, William Klein, the legendary American photographer and filmmaker, has put together a body of work as thrillingly eclectic as any living artist. In his 1969 film, Muhammad Ali, the greatest, Klein found a subject that combined his interest in sport and social criticism, and much the same combination can be seen at work in a very different cultural context in the French. Klein was the first person to be granted full exclusive access to the tournament in its 90-year history, and using that doorway into locker rooms, TV studios, and players' boxes, he shot the ultimate behind-the-scenes look at the 1981 French Open, a crucial moment in a crucial year in the history of a game and its iconic players. Like, I, I don't love tennis, but this is supposedly incredible had rave reviews sounds amazing uh the cover art on this is gorgeous uh i i kind of feel like i have to see this yeah i'm definitely going to pick this one up i i was trying to look around and see if i could watch it before the show but I, I there's no there's nowhere to watch this so yeah i'll be grabbing this this sounds really interesting and this is like a lot my dad was really into tennis and so i, I watched wimbledon's every year and so and i played a little nice. bit but i was not that good at it and uh but I think this will be really interesting. Um, and it's set in a really good time for tennis. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fascinated by this one. I, I, I definitely would pick it up again. Keen Lorber. Always important. Uh, next July 23rd Unearthed is releasing confessions of a serial killer, <laughs> specifically the director's cut. Uh, oh, this is the okay. full 107 minute director's cut that is coming to Blu-ray for the first time. This is going to have a commentary with the director of this. There's going to be the Henry Lee Lucas story by author and TV news correspondent, James Moore, and then a full length documentary on Robert a Burns on this, uh, and the actor Rondo Hatton. Um, again, very unearthed style of movie and uh yeah, yeah. it's supposed to be good yeah i've not seen this and uh unearthed just like their their uh selections are like fascinating they they it's like they just they're just picking from all over the place but this feels like feels like in their wheelhouse so yeah. um i'm interested Yep, it uh, it's supposedly uh, again one that's pretty great. I've not seen it; it's from 1985. Yeah, but uh, coming know. on coming on July 23rd, and the director's cut. So, yep. Uh, speaking of cult epics, we just talked about them. Uh, kind of an interesting box set to put out here. But uh, May 21st, they are releasing a Blu-ray box set, Tinto Brass Volume Two, Maestro of Erotic Cinema. This is going to include Paprika, All Ladies Do It, PO Box, Tinto Brass, and Frivolous Lola. Now, the hard part here. Uh, two of these movies have already been released from Cult Epics on Blu-ray, and two of them are about to come out on 4K. So if you have individual titles from any of these, this box set is completely pointless for you. However, if you have none of them, this is going to be a really great, uh, easy purchase because um, these are these are decent. If you've got the other stuff from Tinto Brass, th this is the way to go here. So yeah, a lot of stuff coming. Yeah, I have not seen any of these. But that is an interesting choice to then have 4Ks on the way. Right. <laughs> I mean, again, they're not the first company to do this. So, However, the but. interesting thing, All Ladies Do It and Frivolous Lola have not been released on Blu-ray in the U.S. at all. 
So mm. these are coming out on 4K in the next month and a half, and then on Blu-ray. So there you have it. And it, and he has a movie titled P.O. Box Tinto Brass. Like he put yep. his own name. Oh yeah, on the title. Like that's that's a flex. Uh, uh, you know, good for you, Tinto. Like it takes, some, <laughs> it takes some brass balls. <laughs> it does. It does. <laughs> Going to the next one. Uh, June 11th on 4K Steelbook from Cape Light in the U.S., which is going to be distributed by MPI Media Group. The Last Kumite from 2024, brand new movie. Uh, this is going to be a very early 90s style, uh, Billy Blanks, uh, Cynthia Rothrock type style of movie. And it uh, turns out they're both in it as well uh, as major parts <laughs> to, to get you to buy this. Um, yes, The Last Kumite, it looks very... Um, very like kickboxer, very blood sport style, just kind of shot very digitally. Um, however, Dude, it do, it, does, it I don't know if you saw, did you see the trailer for this? No, it looks no. like they may have applied a little bit of a, uh, like film filter to make it have that 90s, uh, oh, okay. early 90s look. Okay, interesting. Do you have to, do you have to have seen the first Kumite to, for this to make sense or <laughs> the first six actually? This oh, is part seven. Okay. This is the we, we swear this is the last Kumite. <laughs> yep, there's been uh, so and many then, Kumites. I've missed a lot of them, so I'm interested in the whole franchise. I, I think they might uh, take after the Friday the 13th, and after they do the last Kumite, the next one will be, of course, they only got one. four more. We got four and, more after the and last they'll, Kumite. They'll do like the, the Kumite 8. I, mean, yep. that, that, mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, man, it writes itself. Uh, next, May 7th on Blu-ray from Kino, Back from the Dead from 1957, starring the great Peggy Castle. This one has a new audio commentary from Tom Weaver, Gary D. Rhodes, and Larry Blamere, and another new audio commentary by David DelVal and Dana M. Reams. Two audio commentaries. Somebody said, how do they keep up with 30? And yet this movie gets two. They're, they're just doing so many. Tom Weaver, too. Like, uh, we may, I may be bringing him up uh, when we get to the Kino disc, his commentaries are just their music. They're fantastic. They are like, yep. they are wall to wall. There's no breaks. He is so well prepared. Uh, the movie itself is okay. It's, it's kind of noirish. Um, a lot of sets a little bit, there's a little bit outside and then a lot of sets it's about a woman who, um, the a, a, a man remarries his new wife suddenly uh the spirit of his previous wife who has has passed away under mysterious circumstances i guess possesses his new new wife very interesting and and it was written by a, a woman and i feel like she definitely had something to say about the right. you know patriarchy and uh you know the how women are treated in society and uh certainly interesting from from that perspective but very much interested in this one because of the Tom Weaver commentary. Yeah, this should be a pretty great release. And once again, the the cover art the Kino has been getting, it's not, it's not like striking catch your eye necessarily, but you take a moment to look at it. And so much of their art lately has just been, you know, that's, that's a perfect fit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next up is another Kino, I believe. Yeah, May 21st, they are releasing Slam. This is from 1988. Uh, I have never seen this one, uh, but it sounds pretty damn good. Yep. Uh, have you seen this one? No, no, I, I have not seen it. I, I have heard of it, and I but I have not seen it. So this is starring Saul Williams, Sonia Sohn, and Bones Malone. Slam is a powerful work of cinema verite that, uh, that portrays the story of a young black performance poet, Raymond Joshua, who is arrested in a prison for a petty marijuana charge in Washington, D.C. jail. Although the confining prison walls do little to shield him from danger, it is within those walls that Raymond establishes his identity, strength, and voice and meets a prison gang leader and a prison writing teacher, Lauren Bell, Bell inspires Raymond to use the power of creative expression to free himself from the struggles and demise of the black male as another victim of the judicial system. Sublime poetry and heart-wrenching realism slam is itself a testament to the importance and the impact of artistic expression. Um, and then on top of that, we got an audio commentary from the director and the star Bones Malone. Like, that's pretty rad. I mean, the 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 amount of stuff from Kino. I mean, not to jump to where we're going to get our discussion later, but just what they're putting out this month, that's, I mean from all over the place it is so cool the the variety that they're putting out is it's it's unreal yeah it's a lot it's 
yeah, too much to cover because we're not even done. The next mm-hmm. Kino title, uh, May 28th on Blu-ray, Arthur Dong's Asian American Stories, including Hollywood Chinese, Forbidden City USA, and The Killing Fields of Dr. Heng S. Nagore. Um, we got uh, alternate Khmer audio for The Killing Fields uh, release, but other than that, this is just a uh, cobble together a box set from these so that they can put them all in there. And they didn't get many new extras, but um, yeah, this is a... Uh, this is one of those releases that is super important. Nobody else would have released this, and yet Kino is ringing the bell for all kinds of stuff for physical media. Yeah, this 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 looks cool too. Uh, next up is one that excited me more than almost anything this week. Uh, June twenty fifth, Altered Innocence is releasing Ozone's Transgress- Transgressive Triple. Um, this is going to be available from Diabolic DVD right now with an exclusive slipcover, or uh, you can get it widely through MVD anywhere else. Um, this is a look at the exclusive slipcover on here. And uh, these just sound incredible. Uh, I'm not sure how I've missed these. Um, a lot of people were uh, seem to have seen these before, but uh, just the way that they describe this, it says kink, murder, incest, and cannibalisms. Cannibalism? So that was a weird word. Uh, <laughs> these are just a few of Francois... Multiple cannibalisms. <laughs> yeah, roast me in the chat for that one, for sure. Uh, these are just a few of Francois Ozone's favorite things in his early features. Ozone has built a vast and versatile body of work, and while he may have gained the spotlight after the critically acclaimed and elegantly subtle Under the Sand from 2000, this collection rediscovers Ozone's brash roots with a trilogy like no other, and uh, we're getting all kinds of special features, um, we're getting visual essays. We're getting uh, one including uh, Kat Ellinger on there. We're getting commentary. We're getting new interviews. Um, this sounds magnificent. Wild. Yeah. I'm, I don't know a lot of Ozone stuff. So this is this sounds like the release to, to try to, if you don't know him or if you do, to pick up. <laughs> yes. Uh, and on that note, I know that I just teased one interview um, about... Uh, Jim O'Hare coming on in two weeks, literally next Monday, dropping on the channel. I finally got Altered Innocence. So you can hear from the, nice. the man himself, Frank Jaffe. We are discussing Ozan's transgressive triple and his move away from OCN and the history behind the label, what he loves in film. It's a really fun interview. And Frank is just passionate beyond belief. So if you are a fan of Altered Innocence or just excited to learn about them, uh, it, it's one of the ones that I've, I've, I've felt afterwards like, I'm so glad that I can share this individual's passion with the people that will potentially buy their discs because, man, he comes through for everything. Um, I, I've been trying to get Frank for like two years. Uh, he is just an incredibly busy person. But um, you'll see, again, just every single word that comes out of his mouth, you're, you're going to love it. Um, all, Altered Innocence is one to watch in the, in the oh, immediate yeah. future. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious for that interview. And I'm interested for so many people that have been leaving OCN. Like, I'm just curious about that. Just... Not like for any sort of dramatic reason or anything. It just feels like it's interesting to me to see why people are like get in there with him and then kind of walk away. And so I don't know. Just I'm very curious to hear what he says about that. So, yep, I hear you. Uh, Next up, uh, not really a conventional announcement, uh, but Walmart is putting out uh, re releases of Mondo X Steelbooks. We got four of them the Black Panther, Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy. And the Avengers, these were all released in the UK and Germany previously, and now they're coming out in the US out of nowhere um, at Walmart. Now, the funny thing is uh, the the press release said you'll be able to pre-order these, or actually it says uh, these will be available on March 13th. It's now March 14th, and uh, they don't exist. They're not anywhere. (laughs) You can't see them online. You can't go into any store and get them. Uh, I found out from somebody that they messaged Walmart and said, I want to buy these. And the the chat representative of Walmart, first off, they have no idea about these titles. So this response is hilarious. But they said, though, it got lost on the website and it will be available at the end of March, the beginning of April, or maybe in May. (laughs) So Uh, at some point. (laughs) Okay. I I mean, that is like that that is the epitome of Walmart right there. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad they've taken over for Best Buy. This is all going well. (laughs) Um, I I will say these steelbooks are gorgeous in hand, specifically. The Doctor Strange one is amazing to get this super old comic style 
Yeah. It, it is beautiful to see. I think these were all in my Mondo video that I put out like a year ago. Go check that out if you haven't. I've got that in uh, on the channel already. Um, but yeah, let's go to the next one. They look amazing. I Or, or not. But even if I wanted to get them. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Uh, let's talk about Umbrella. Uh, yeah. We've got our second announcement of the Raid on 4K. Uh, all of these Umbrella titles are coming out on July 3rd in Australia. Uh, so the Raid 4K, we are getting the original Raid in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. Now, again, Umbrella did not do their own restoration on this. This is the right. exact same restoration as uh, the Steelbook that came out in um, the U.S. And uh, you, you're not going to get anything special necessarily if you're just looking for the film itself. So don't feel like you have to get this. Uh, there is a standard version available, but if you want to go all out because you love the Raid, which I know many, many people do, they are giving you uh, some options here. So you've got the original uh, Raid film, of course. You've got the original Titan graphic novel in a hardback release, a softback book with a new Q&A with Gareth Evans in it, behind-the-scenes experiences and art, a custom artwork outer rigid slipcase, custom artwork slipcase inside of that, eight art cards, a reversible poster, and then it's numbered. And again, all out on this. You've got two different books. This is going to be a giant release. Um, yeah, if you love the raid, like this is a great looking release. I will warn everybody though, this is the raid and it has been exploited on physical media. There is likely going to be about 14 releases of this movie over the next three years. <laughs> yeah. If you love to part it, or yeah. I, I was reading uh, Def Crocodile's uh, chat there. If you love the raid and you really want this, or you're going to get multiples, go for it. However, there's already rumors that uh, Second Sight may have this in the UK. I'm not saying they do. I, I've heard that they might. Um, we already got the Steelbook from Sony in the US. We're probably going to get some other US boutique release of this eventually there's just so much for this yeah yeah i'm 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 on the fence about it I, I i saw it and put it in the cart but i'm like i the graphic novel could be cool like the booklet i'm sure is awesome i love the box but i mean i do already have the blu-ray of the two of both the raid movies yep do i want to just get spend 70 dollars on just the one movie with tons of extra stuff when like you said somebody else is going to pick this up and do this probably domestically in some way. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm on the, uh, I'm on the fence. Right. And yeah, the, where's, where's the raid, where's raid two. Yeah. I mean, that's a good, that'll be, that'll be next. And then somebody will then put them together. And these are the orders that will, you know, and the, yep. the deluxe. By 2028, you'll have about 47 options. Yeah. So I'm kind of like, do I do this now? Or do I just hold off and wait and see what comes, you know, as much as I love those eight art cards, those would be great. But <laughs> I have enough art cards. I can put those next to these condoms, you know, and <laughs> right there on my shelves. Oh, man. They look great. But um, yeah, I'm a little like, and I don't even mind that it's not even like a brand new scan. At least they're at least a forward about that on Umbrella. But, yeah. And, and I order from Umbrella a lot. I really like them. But uh, I'm just, yeah, it's the raid. I don't know. Right. It's a, I love the movies, but I don't know. Well, next up from them is uh, one of my favorites. Uh, we've got the Lucio Fulci title, A Lizard in a Woman's Skin from 1971. This is coming on Blu-ray, not 4K. Uh, this, is, um, th this is different from the previous U.S. release, so you may want to listen up for a moment. Okay. Uh, if, if you've never seen this, this movie's amazing. Fantastic. Uh, this is top-tier Fulci, in my opinion. Absolutely. About to, I was just about to say that. This is top-tier. In, in fact, this is easily, well, maybe I shouldn't say the word easily. This, this is definitely top five. And depending on the day, I've had this at top one quite a bit. Top one. It's such a wild and, and beautiful movie. And it really, this shows like the style that Fulci could really command and pull off that he doesn't always get the chance to do. But my God, this is such a good movie. Beautiful, sh beautifully shot. It's a really good film. Uh, so this one, we've got a 48-page book featuring essays from Alexandra Heller Nicholas and Kit Garvin. We've got a rigid slipcase and then the original poster art slipcase, eight art cards, a reversible poster, numbered release. It's it's umbrella that that's like that's like the baseline nowadays. It seems like yeah. for them. Yeah. Uh, and then we got a new feature-length audio commentary with Howard S. Berger and Troy Howarth. It's their first commentary together. Uh, 
two of my wow. buds uh, on the on the commentary together for the first time. Loving that. Uh, and Howard, if you love Howard S. Berger, he is all over this disc. So we got that commentary. He also did a video essay uh, for Lucio in a woman's skin is what it's called. He is part of the Flying Machiste Brothers. And then he also did another visual essay called One, No One, and 100 Fulci's. Uh, and he did this with Francesco Massachesi. And then uh, Kim Newman speaks on Stanley Baker on this as well. There's some archival items on this. And then a Lucio Fulci trailer reel. But the big thing that I didn't know that Umbrella is not uh, like advertising for some reason. The previous release of this that came out in the U.S., for those that don't know, Mondo Macabro released this on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. It is now out of print, fully out of print, I believe. Um, I found out in their comments when they were hyping this up that this is uh, the Mondo Macabre release was a cut version. And this is oh. uncut. I don't know how much longer it is, but it is at least a little bit longer. Now, I'm not saying there's not going to be a U.S. release. Uh, Mondo could announce that next week on 4K as part of their announcements. Arrow could pick it up. Uh, I, I don't see Shout Factory selling something like this um severin could technically put it out that wouldn't surprise me at all they love fulci i would love it if shout factory put this out that would be incredible i would love it if they suddenly pick this one up all no, of the I complaints all of the complaints about shout factory for two years and all of a sudden they're like here's a 4k release of lizard and a woman's skin with brand new extras <laughs> right in a regular blu-ray or steelbook like it <laughs> <laughs> with five lobby cards and it'll only cost they, you ninety dollars they would need to release it on blu-ray first so we know it's not going to be them because they need to do it a <laughs> blu-ray and then back it up three months later with a 4k so <laughs> yeah so I, i'm not saying it's coming out in the u.s i don't know anything about that at all i i'm not teasing anything or anything like that um this is this is one of those titles though that fulci sells well <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's a site exclusive, Christopher says. <laughs> Limited to 1,843 yeah. copies. Until we just happen to find more. I just don't know how that happened. We just happened to find another thousand. I don't know how we pulled that off. It sold out the first four hours. So somehow we found 3,609 of them right. in the that warehouse. That box in the corner of the room. I didn't realize it was another box full of more of these. It's so crazy. Uh, so Lizard and Woman's Skin. Highly recommend the movie if you don't have it. This is not a bad release to get. Not going to say you shouldn't get this. There's a standard release. You can get the standard at Orbit, at Diabolic, at Atomic, at all these places in the U.S. But if you want to hold out, I, I don't necessarily fault you for that. I would not be surprised if this was released by another boutique, whether it's in the U.S. or the U.K., in the next 18 months. Because um, I don't think there's any other release of this in print at the moment. I may be wrong there. Somebody can fact check me, please. But I, I think everything on Lizard and Woman's Skin is currently out of print which sucks for accessibility yeah i mean this that for that that commentary like this this one is speaking my interest just for that commentary alone so yeah. but i'm wondering if it will get a u.s release and if they don't like port that over for the u.s release like i imagine that might happen so i'm 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 on the fence but this looks awesome and it's a great movie it's an incredible movie and then uh beyond beyond all of that i will just say uh, I, I know that uh, it, it's going to come across as biased no matter how I say it. Howard S. Berger, having been on the channel before, been a friend. Um, he is a great person. His visual essays are next level. Uh, I watched, uh, maybe I shouldn't say much. Uh, I watched two visual essays for an upcoming Arrow release that hasn't been announced yet that he worked on. Mm -hmm. My God, people, um, if you are not watching his visual essays, he puts in so much work. What he turns in is basically full-blown professional level documentaries and it is it is absolutely worth it sometimes just to check out his work and uh cinema jimbo calls out use a uh, serial at midnight i'm going to promote his channel i guess serial 15 on the umbrella site gets a 15 percent off uh discount right now mm. every little bit helps it's you got a it's a 140 dollar threshold to get uh free shipping so uh, last thing on to the Lizard U.S., and, I should say. Yeah, that's true. Unless uh, I think it's $150 for free shipping. So just buy a lot and you'll be fine. I can send it to my P.O. box in Australia, but then I have to get the P.O. box. Is really, that's then, the then you got to fly to Australia. <laughs> yeah. Then, yeah, that's the tough part. Uh, Chris brings up, I honestly have to say umbrella transfers are not the best, but they have some stellar packaging. Reminder that uh, they don't do most of their transfers. No. They are just given stuff from the studios unless it's an Aussie title. Those are genuinely in-house restorations. And then those, they advertise like crazy. 
that those are brand new restorations. They're super proud of them. But like this, we're not getting any info on the restoration, uh, mm. probably for a reason. They, it probably was just handed to them, and they they don't have any stake in it. Uh, but speaking of them uh, doing restorations, the last of the month is this incredible looking Ozploitation Rarities Volume 1. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is going to include Lady Stay Dead, Final Cut, and Crosstalk. Uh, Lady Stay Dead came out previously, uh, I think it was Code Red? Uh, oh, was it? I don't, maybe. Uh... Anyways, Lady Stay Dead had a US release previously. Um, but this looks great. And uh, the big thing, they are advertising three brand new restorations of lost and overlooked Aussie thrillers slathered in sleaze. Uh, and on these, we got a bunch of extras, uh, brand new extras on every single disc. Lots of stuff with the not quite Hollywood documentary, of course. Code Red put it out. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Uh, oh, man. Yeah, Simoner's right. I could see Vinegar Syndrome putting out a deluxe version of Lizard and a Woman's Skin. Not not going to argue with that. It's very possible. Yeah. Although I don't think they've done a Fulci yet at all. Uh, not that I'm sure they're not against it at all. I just sure it, sure. It, the, usually with Fulci stuff, the licensing is like in bundles, and mm -hmm. so I don't know who else uh, has those right now. I wouldn't be surprised if Severin kept a hold of them. Although maybe Cauldron too. I forgot about Cauldron. They just did the the Fulci made for TV stuff. Right. And uh, City, City of the Living Dead, they did Touché. that, day, which Touché. you know blew up everybody. I mean, I grabbed it, I only own it, I only own it's not my third copy of that movie, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, man, yeah, so this, this looks like a pretty great release, tons of extras on this. And if you've never seen them, uh, the ones I have seen on here, especially Lady Stay Dead, these are pretty interesting, fun, good movies, uh. Fun is probably an odd word to use. These are these are pretty sleazy. They're pretty dark. Yeah, They're pretty dark. Um, I've only watched two out of the three. Um, I watched Crosstalk too, which is a sort of <clears throat> um, rear window kind of uh, updated for the 1980s and a AI security system. Um, and it kind of ends as it's just kind of getting going, unfortunately, but. Like they're they're both that and Lady Stay Dead, which I've also seen. Yeah, those are both like they're pretty they're pretty solid. They're pretty decent movies. Um, so I'm very curious about this one. I certainly grabbed it right away, and now I'm like I'm thinking about I'm thinking about it. But did you say like whether or not they have they these are their transfers? These are all brand new restorations. Yes, all oh, that's three. A, that's the thing. Like the the versions I've seen of these have all been pretty mediocre yeah. transfers. You know, so to kind of see them in a better light. Uh, that, that I, I'm I'm very interested, but I haven't seen the other one, the uh the other the third film, but and Final Cut's supposed to be great. Uh, let's see. Even yeah. uh in the chat, Dallas says Final Cut is so wild, worth the price of the set just for that one. Okay, movie. okay, good to know. Good to know. And uh, yeah, like Paul said, the big thing that caught my eye is this is Ozploitation Volume One. They right. are clearly right. planning on doing more of these. Uh, uh sorry, Ozploitation Rarities Volume One. Yeah, th this is rad. This is kind of umbrella. I feel like stepping up. You know what I mean? This because they have that reputation, not really getting new transfers. This is them saying, "Okay, we hear that. We're going to start yep. doing and and doing it with their with exploitation. This is perfect. It's a perfect label to do this. Exactly. So um, I'm kind of excited for this release because I really like Umbrella. But um, yeah, this looks rad. Yep. Uh, next up, VCI, the the incredibly high quality VCI. Is Speaking of quality. <laughs> street Scene from 1931 on Blu-ray. This is coming on July 9th. Uh, the, it's, uh, <laughs> this part says, the film's restoration allows us to fully experience the power of street scene, seeing and hearing in vivid clarity as Anna Morant, her daughter Rose, and neighbor Sam Kaplan open their hearts and crash against the limitations of their environment. Um yeah, this is uh, supposedly great, but again, it's VCI. Kind of hard to uh, to trust on the surface. I mean, they really worked hard on this uh, cover art. So, I mean, I'll hand it to they're clearly they're clearly working hard behind the scenes. I mean, you did have to pause it on a scene that wasn't blurry before you got the screenshot. I mean, and this tell you would look at this shot and you're like, I'm curious. <laughs> you know, if you haven't seen it before, you're like. What's happening here? What are they looking at? I gotta know. 
What is the scene happening on the street? All, right. All I can see is the backdrop. Are they looking at the street? What's happening? What's the scene on the street that they're looking at? I got to check it out. I don't know. I got to know. <laughs> Curiosity peaked. Well done, <laughs> VCI. <laughs> uh, next up, speaking of Shout Factory site <laughs> yes. exclusives, uh, <laughs> the Crow Salvation from 2000 starring Fantastic. Kirsten Dunst. Kirsten uh, is, Dunst oh. is available now, limited to 1,620 units. Uh, this has tons of bonus features on it, surprisingly. Uh, yeah. We've got an audio commentary with a handful of people. We've got a couple behind the scenes featurettes, production design featurettes, a, a feature called Who's That Bird? No idea what it is. Uh, image gallery and trailer. However, I, I bet it's a crow. <laughs> Just a uh, guess, but. None of these are brand new features, of course. These are all archival from the DVD. And of course, they're not advertising the scan on this because I have a feeling the scan is archived from the DVD as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I would not expect this to look good at all. Yeah, and there's a you can get the DVD set of all three. I mean, if you want right. to do that, I mean, that's that's out there. Go on and, to eBay. And it'll grab cost it. less this one than this one release. Yeah, this is baffling, this choice. <laughs> This is a $30 side exclusive that if you're just stoked that the crow is coming on 4K and you want to buy this to complement it, $30 and $8 shipping, $8 <laughs> media mail shipping for the crow salvation starring Kirsten Dunst. I mean, you got to complete your Kirsten Dunst collection. I mean, you got to you gotta get them all, you know? So sometimes you got to pay $38 to get the crow salvation. <laughs> it's i i don't know what shout is doing i i they they're a delight to me every month i don't know what they're up to what are you doing guys i i'm so curious and i have to buy tons of their stuff because they have all they have the whole corman library so i'm at i'm at their mercy and so many of those are side exclusives <laughs> yes yeah oh man i anyways i i I don't want to hammer on them more. However, there is one more title, so let's hammer a little more. Hey, Venomous. Trent Williams died. Let's put out Venomous. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this one also exclusive to the site. 1,620. I guess that's the new 1,500. Uh, bonus features on this is it has audio, and there's an audio commentary with Fred Olin Ray. Um, right, right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I'm surprised that Makeflix missed out on this one. Uh, they seem to be all over the Fred Olin Ray stuff. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't know about this one. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Pro probably not, Shaw Factory. <laughs> probably not. I don't think you got me on this one. And I love Tree Williams. I love stupid snake movies. I just, I don't know about this one, guys. I feel bad just constantly laying into them, but also you're kind of begging for it. I mean, also the, these are your two releases. This it isn't like they have some other one where you're like, and also this right. terrific movie that right. we're also putting out, but also these other ones, which you might think like to avoid the eight dollars shipping and get yourself to uh, the fifty dollars and get free shipping. The ah, maybe I'll throw one of these in there. You know what I mean? Right. But they don't. You you would have to buy both Venomous and The Crow Salvation to get yourself. And who's, I don't know, somebody might do that. And bless you if that's who you are. And, you know, that's great. Enjoy those movies, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and I feel like I'm the target market for Venomous. <laughs> you know? It was made it's, for you. It's huh? like these kinds of movies are the my jam. I love this stuff, but I'm like, I don't, I don't know about this, guys. I don't know. Well, uh, we got eight more to cover, um, and those were all announced today. So the last day worth of announcements. Uh, first, we got some stuff announced from Indicator. Uh, these first three that we're going to talk about are coming on June 17th in the UK and June 18th in the US and Canada. The last one is a UK-only title. Uh, this first one here is Tomorrow We Live from 1942. This was released as At Dawn We Die in the US. Uh, very... Very uh, juxtaposing titles there. Kind of odd. Tomorrow we live, at dawn we die. Hmm. Which, which is it? <laughs> uh, this has, again, as usual with Indicator, 
tons of new bonus features. We got an audio commentary with uh, Josephine Botting and Robert Murphy. We've got uh, Pamela Hutchinson speaking on Greta Gint. We've got an interview with Roy Douglas from 2005, some image galleries, new subs, and then, of course, a limited booklet with some writing uh, that is new, and then some archival writing as well. Lots of stuff coming into this. Uh, Indicator is just great. Yeah, I don't think they they don't put out bad movies. Um, not at all. Now, had they put out Venomous, I'd be very curious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, would they would they go for that? I mean, <gasps> would, would they have kept the original poster art on the hard box design that they made? <laughs> um, I, I want to know when is their Fred Olin Ray box set? I'm curious. Get on an indicator. <laughs> Let's do it. It'll be a partnership with Makeflix in the UK. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm next all up, for it. I'm all for it. The shop at Sly Corner from 1947. Once again, lots of new bonus features. We got a commentary with Josephine Bodding and Fung Lee on this one. We've got Jonathan Rigby speaking on Oscar Homolka. We've got a 2009 conversation with Muriel Pavlo. And then uh, some other image galleries and booklet and such like that. Uh, I, I know nothing about these four titles they announced, by the way. Me neither. Yeah, me neither. But I mean, I'm curious. I'm, uh, you know, but, uh, but I have no idea. I've not seen them. So, uh, once again, though, the art looks incredible on all four. Uh, next up is Obsession with Robert Newton and Sally Gray. This one is from 1949. Uh, again, UK and US release on these three that we just talked about. This one has a brand new audio commentary. It's got an archival audio recording of the director of this in conversation with uh, John Baxter. We've got uh, Richard Dyer speaking on Obsession, some in some more interviews from 1988, and then a booklet as usual. This one is uh, Finson McDonough and archival articles on Edward Dimitrix period in Britain. I mean, so much that you can say for all of these releases. It's exactly, it's exactly what you expect from uh, yeah. Indicator. Yeah. So consistent. Yeah, just totally solid. And the last title, which again, this one is exclusive to the UK only. We get The Whole Truth from 1958. This one's got some names in it. We got Stuart Granger, George Sanders, Donna Reed. Uh, this one has an audio commentary with Kevin Lyons and Jonathan Rigby on this. Uh, we've got Robert Shale speaking on The Whole Truth. And then uh, image galleries and audio recordings and the limited edition booklet, just like everything else. This one has new writing with Barry Forshaw. <clears throat> Indicator. I mean, yeah. what else can be said? Uh, yeah. They just kill it. It's it's impressive. Uh, then, uh, <laughs> May 21st, MPI Media Group is releasing the newest Woody Allen film. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Still making movies. Still making Surprisingly, movies. Surprisingly, this got pretty great reviews. Uh, this one is called Coup de Chance, uh, also known as Stroke of Luck. Um, it's supposed to be a decent thriller. It's and it's a thriller. by Woody Allen interesting yeah um yeah like a crimes and misdemeanors maybe from him uh yeah. he loves to repeat himself particularly in his older age um looks like we say. got yeah he, <laughs> he i haven't seen one of his movies in a long time but uh me neither but, by choice <laughs> yes yeah i was a huge woody allen fan and then just yeah uh i was really into him uh, and then, you know, now I'm just absolutely the other way around. So now I don't want anything to do with him. And this one looks a little creepy for a Woody Allen film to have that guy in the back just kind of yeah. looking at these two young. I'm like, uh oh, this is uh, uh, and a thriller and it's Woody Allen. I don't know. I don't know. Move in moving. right along. Uh, <laughs> something more tasteful. Barbed wire uh, from 1996. Now you He's got me. Now you got me. A 4K. Where's, where's my wallet? Where's my wallet? <laughs> Turbine releasing barbed wire on 4K literally next week. Gonna, um, this is coming uh, in two steelbooks. Uh, it's got two different full slip art options. You can go with the classic art or this uh, interesting newer art. And uh, this is a brand new 4K restoration from the original negative with HDR and Dolby Vision. The unrated version is on the Blu-ray, not 4K, but at least you got both versions in this. Um, and then there's new interviews with the producer, Todd Moyer, from the costume designer, the effects supervisor. And then, of course, the classic uh, extras on these, the sexy outtakes, the making of, some promo featurettes, some trailers. Um, lots on here. This is English-friendly. English subs abound on some of the features and on the commentary. 
uh, uh, not the commentary, sorry, the the actual feature itself. Um, art looks fun on this, but it's barbed wire. <laughs> it's barbed wire. Yeah, I'm gonna put it right on the shelf next to Blood Rain. This is <laughs> barbed in wire movies that are fun. shocking <laughs> that they're in 4K. <laughs> yep. Get the steel book. I mean, I don't know. I could. <laughs> I I'm probably in on this one. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> well, if you are in on this one, uh, check out brotherbelial.com. They mm -hmm. get all kinds of the German releases in. They do incredible work to ship it to you very safely. Friend of mine owns the website. He is amazing at what he does. Uh, trust them if you trust me. Brotherbelial.com. Uh, next title is one that we have been waiting on for like a year now. That got teased last year, mm -hmm. super early. Uh, you can order Darren Aronofsky's Pie on 4K and Blu-ray from A24 right now. Now, the big thing is a lot of us get the uh, A24 emails, and when they sent you the email, very, very slyly, the email had a link to the, the release of the film and a book, and they didn't really show you that it was two things together or push that narrative too much. It was by the film, and you click on it, and it's $58. And you go and you search up the film on their website and it comes out, you can get the 4K for only 35. So if you don't need that book, it's a surprisingly fair priced 4K release from A24 for uh, what is, uh, you know, not even arguably an incredible film. Yeah. Um, this is going to have two commentaries, both recorded in 1998. It's got some behind the scenes footage, deleted scenes, music video for Clint Mansell's original score, the 1998 Sundance Film Festival directing award acceptance speech. And uh, that's it, but it's got a booklet in there. It's, uh, it's a very A24 release. Looks like a solid release. Have you seen Pi, Chad? I... <laughs> <laughs> Chad, I have. Um, yeah, I saw Pi back in the day. I remember. I still remember the, the trailers for it, seeing it and being like, ooh, this whole black and white number. And um, this is the first movie I ever saw from the, from him. And so... Uh, and was very taken with it. I thought it was really good. It's a really good movie. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like baffled. I'm like, how did A24 get the rights to this? That's kind of interesting. Yeah, um, the, they picked I, it up early last year just for distribution. Showed it in theaters, kind of like. Uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Kind of like what they just did for the Talking Heads. So. Right, right. Okay, that makes sense. I just missed that part of it. But yeah, this is you know for Aronofsky fans, this is certainly a good one to see. Um, still visually really interesting even in black and white it's a great it's a great movie i mean yeah it's worth worth checking out beyond that super smart to release it on pi day like we should have uh, seen that course. coming months ago sure sure uh all and right of course having a link and then you have to go somewhere else and it like it's like this that makes perfect sense with the the movie yeah. itself so it's a mathematical equation yeah they've done a really good job <laughs> uh and finally uh, May 14th, Kino is releasing The Lawyer from 1970. This is a Sidney J. Fury film, which was in the imprint box set of Sidney J. Fury films, mm. which I'm so stoked they're releasing this because I did not pick up the Sidney J. Fury box set from imprint. Same, same. And, and I, I wanted really to. wanted it. Yes. I, me too. And I was like, I feel like these are going to be released stateside because some of them already had. So I was like, I got it. And so awesome. This is great. Uh, I, I looked at the box set and said, I really want it. I also really want to pay my mortgage. Unfortunately, mortgage won. And uh, stupid yeah. banks. The banks <laughs> are the worst. I'm glad I'll be able to get this for like twelve dollars rather than the box set being one forty five or whatever yeah, it was. It was a lot. Yeah, but I was gonna uh, buy it. <laughs> um, thankfully, they ported over most of Daniel Kramer's. Uh, in fact, I think they did all for this release that was on this disc. So I'm hoping they get some of the others that they had the, in this box set. I, I would love to get it because, again, Daniel uh, Kramer is the Sidney J. Fury man. He's literally written the book on Sidney J. Fury, mm. close friends with the man. Uh, the bonus features on this are supposed to be remarkable. Cannot wait to check this out. I, I, I'm so stoked that we are getting some of these in the U.S. Yeah, and it makes sense that it would be Kino because they'd released some of his stuff in the past. So that, and they've released some of the imprint stuff, a lot of the imprint stuff actually. Mm -hmm. They are they are kind of the go to for uh, imprint re releases in the U.S. Right. Um, as usual, after announcements, we go into what's coming out next week. So let's cover real quick. Ooh, uh, okay. 
Terravision titles should be in. These were just announced about two and a half weeks ago, and these should all be arriving at Terravision headquarters in the next 10 days. Uh, we got River from 2023, which uh, we are on a visual essay for this. Uh, we've got yep. Door 2, which Will is on an audio commentary for this with Nina K. Martin, and also did a visual essay on this. And then uh, President's Day comes out as well. And then Dream Stalker, we are on that for a visual essay that was done by Erica and Lance from Unsung Whores. And it is fantastic. One of the favorite things that we've uh, produced so far. Interesting cover art. Uh, yeah, it's it's a fever dream, Haze. I, mm. I'm not sure. Uh, mm. It was an abstract choice, but uh, yeah. it works out. Yeah, no, it's, it's well done. <laughs> uh next uh that was uh, you know this is in the next few days but next tuesday specifically the ring collection 4k from scream factory k19 the widowmaker 4k from shout select that's still such an odd choice such uh, a weird choice <laughs> the manchurian candidate oh. 4K from kino the Child, remake yeah of course uh child's play 4k carry 4k both remakes uh, Changing Lanes 4K from Kino, Dark Water 4K from Arrow, Witness 4K getting a standard release from Arrow, Rent a Cop with Burt Lancaster from uh, Burt yeah. Reynolds. Or why did I say Burt Lancaster? I would love to oh, see God. Burt Lancaster and, Le and not in 1988. Maybe. I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure. I want to see, I mean, you, you can make an argument against Burt, Burt Reynolds in 1988, but uh, Ooh. I have almost bought Rent a Cop several times. <laughs> uh in advance of this release but i also have seen it so i'm like that's what keeps getting me like i'm gonna i'm gonna wait for the sale i normally pick up anything burt but um i'm gonna i'm gonna hold off i'm gonna wait for a sale on that one thanks for that dustin i, I know you had to rub that in uh target from kino as well uh lynch oz is coming from janice contemporary suits the complete series the runner from criterion uh the act i know a lot of people were talking about this one i still need to see that uh blazing saddles nothing new it's just a re-release of the disc um the soldier's tale from kino classics we just talked about that one recently driving madeline or madeline from cohen media group and uh, shadow magic from sony pictures classics uh any of these that you are after already pre-ordered or even already got in um i'm definitely gonna or i haven't gotten my my release of the first door and i know it doesn't matter but uh um to door two but i'm probably i'm gonna probably pick up river and door two um and uh i mean <laughs> um i'm probably gonna need to get uh k9 k19 the Widowmaker to go along with venomous and just kind of have those at home no but those are those are the ones i'm definitely going to be picking up um of these releases uh yeah. I don't think any, and and I will be picking up Rent a Cop eventually. <laughs> uh, Eric has uh, said, "I want the ring, just don't want Ring Two or Three. I, I think most people yeah, are in that that's, same boat. That's where, yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, <laughs> not a surprise there. Um, yeah, yeah. Next week is, I mean, there's a lot of decent titles. the The television slate is a really solid slate. Can't wait for people to get those in hand. Uh, I can't wait to get those in hand. Uh, it's gonna be nice. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I don't know why I haven't gotten the first uh, door though. Didn't they release that one already? I or yes. with one of with what with something else like one of their. Um... Did you get Game of Killers? Maybe yes. Yeah, so, so that's what's on hold, right? That's what's on yeah. hold. And it's about yeah. to, I think that one's supposed to ship this, uh, like next Monday or Tuesday. I think it's supposed okay. to come in. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, you want to blaze through some Kino titles? Let's do it. We got, let's do it. 40 minutes before um, the announcement drops. <laughs> we're going to go fast. <laughs> Um, I think all five of mine are in, uh, in print still. If they're not, I apologize. I did not have time to check. I think they are. This first one might not be, so I'll just lead with it just in case. And I'll, I'll go first so you don't have the pressure. Um, oh, no worries. Revisited recently, Trilogy of Terror. Uh, this is this is a masterpiece. And I don't understand how this is not lauded more in every single circle under the sun. Karen Black is creepy beyond belief in this and i know people see this and all they think of is the the uh what is the what do they call it the doll the zuni yeah. fetish doll i never mm -hmm. remember the word zuni um that's good it's not even the best segment of this anthology uh the first one in this is beyond creepy especially with the 2024 lens and karen black is remarkable in this she's very good um, in it yeah 
I, I love anthology horror. I just did a audio podcast recording of an anthology horror episode. And this has multiple brand new things on here. We got a new audio commentary with Richard Harlan Smith. That's pretty good. Uh, there's a new uh, interview with the composer in this, which is pretty good. And then there's a bunch of archival features. This disc is really great. And when it first came out, I don't even remember. I think that was like 2021 or 2020 that it came out. You could get this thing for like $13 on release. And so many people just overlooked it because it was made for TV a horror anthology. Yeah, it is so worth it. Uh, Definitely, yeah. This I remember seeing it on TV. Amazing. Yeah, um, I, I'm going with uh, like I said, I was really into Hong Kong action movies and stuff. So when I had a chance to see my first John Woo in the theater, I definitely took it with Hard Target and nice. uh, been a huge fan of this one forever. And, you know, this, this disc is fantastic. Uh, it's got audio commentary. Um, it's got, uh, it, it, I've watched the interviews. Like this is just a great release. Really fun. I love this movie. Uh, I think it's probably the best. I know a lot of people, are going to disagree with this one, but I, this is maybe my favorite Woo stateside. I know everybody loves Face Off. And there's plenty to love in Face Off. I do too. I can never get over the fact that John Travolta does this to his child, and that's like a loving gesture. I just, <laughs> from the minute I saw it, I was like, that doesn't, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. No one does that. Not a single person ever on <laughs> earth has ever done that. And so, but. So I love uh, I, I love Hard Target. It's got so many great things in it. I mean, John claude Van Damme surfs a motorcycle and on a bridge, and you know, um, it's got great villains. It's just an awesome film. Love it. It's a good choice and a really great release. Looks good. Um, for those that didn't know, I know it was. Uh, I I think we talked about it plenty on the show when it came out. But Hard Target did have a replacement disc. If you got that first wave, so you want right. to make sure you got the right disc on that. But um, still a solid disc, uh, solid release, looks great. And it's, uh, at this point, it's like essential Kino. Yeah. Um, one, uh, I, in my five that I'm recommending, I had to do one 4k because they've been killing it with the 4k oh, releases. Yeah. Sure. And, um, I've got <laughs> all three of my honorable mentions that I grabbed are 4ks, but again, a lot of the 4ks are, it's a new 4K transfer, but it's not <laughs> not really any new features unless it's one that they're really promoting. Uh, like Kindergarten Cop got two new commentaries or whatever. Um, this one is nothing new, but all the special features on here are really good. And it is an incredible movie that is, I feel like, completely slept on in the Kino catalog. And that's the fact that they put it out of sight on 4K. Um, I am uh, somebody that worships at the Church of Soderbergh as often as I can. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this movie has incredible performances from George Clooney at like the height of his I'm about to be the Hollywood star. And then, I mean, Ving Rhames, Don Cheadle, uh, it's, it's a Soderbergh film. So he kind of just grabs all of his friends. And this movie is incredible. If you've never seen it, this is one that absolutely should be got. And now during a sale, it's like 14, 15 bucks for a 4K release of one of the best movies of uh, the, what year was this? 98? Yeah, 98. Yeah, yeah it's a great call. That It's also, it's a terrific Elmore Leonard uh, adaptation. Um, probably one of the better ones that were, were ever made. It's excellent. Um, I think Scott Frank is the one who wrote the script and did the adaptation is on the, uh, on the uh, and it's a great commentary between him and Soderbergh. Yep. I was in on Soderbergh on Sex, Lies, and Videotape. I rented that uh, at the time, and I bought a book. I have his book, which he has like a diary of taking the film around and the script. Yeah. And from then in, I was just, I was all in. I saw all the movies in the theater, Kafka, uh, <laughs> um, King of the Hill. I was like me uh, and a girl I was dating and two other people. And we, <laughs> so I've been in on Soderbergh and this one was just him going so next level. Yeah. Uh, even one. after the underneath, which I think really showed some of that style. This one was like, he had arrived. It was, it's, you know, and uh, that's a great call. I love that movie. And I, I pre-ordered that out of sight because I was like, hell yes. It's a great. Uh, one. If you had to guess, how many times do you think he's going to retire from filmmaking? I think he's got another couple in him. You know what I mean? I think he's, I think he's, you know, I, I, I do understand <laughs> like he is so good at what he does that he's kind of bored and he doesn't know yeah. how to keep challenging himself. And I totally understand that. But um, 
because he can make a really good movie and it's like it doesn't do anything and so right. him, like then shooting other people's movies and just being a dp doing he's just trying to like mix it up and make it interesting um i, like I just love that he, he, he retired probably. and we've gotten i think eight movies since he yeah. retired i mean yeah and then he started doing tv and then he came back into movies right so it was like okay <laughs> all right my friend what do you got for your second pick well, you want to keep it on the 4Ks, uh, and I said I was going to bring up Tom Weaver, uh, Night of the Hunter. This is like quintessential. So I went from Hard Target to Night of the Hunter. So you know, but um, this is a movie that I honestly had heard about and I had never seen until I got this release. I had never uh, seen it. I don't know why. I don't know how. I don't what know a how mind I blowing it. way to watch it for the first time. And it is a beautiful transfer. It's ter- It's just an unbelievable film. Robert Mitchum is next level in it. Um, Shelley Winters. I mean, there was definitely me watching it going, oh, sure, I've seen all these images, like the one of Shelley Winters <laughs> under the water. I was yeah. like, no, okay. Yeah, I've been an idiot. It's taken me this long to get to it. But um, <laughs> but what a what an awesome release to have to watch it, you know? Um, so that at the very least, if it took this long, because I would have probably seen it on VHS, which wouldn't have looked this good. And I wouldn't have gotten the commentary with Tom Weaver, which is tremendous. So um, awesome. A- excellent film. Right next to Hard Target in terms of your essential, your essential As viewing. It deserves to be. I mean, both of them are essential. That's the thing about Kino. Like that's, they spread the, they just, they, they, they release everything from all different genres and they go so far and wide. You can get all these different movies. I mean, that's why I think they're, that's why I wanted to highlight them because they just, you know, it's almost, it's almost like they're almost easy to overlook because they're right. just so consistent and they put out so many different movies. But like, I probably have more Kinos than any other label, you know? Yeah, I, I think most people actually would probably be able to say that. I, I'm an idiot who has a complete video uh, vinegar syndrome collection, so that's not quite true for me. But um, it's, I mean, Kino's... I'm getting close. I've gotten close. I've, got, I've only been a subscriber for like three years now, but, but, you know. So there's a lot of the early ones I don't have, but I mean, I, I have so many Kinos, they are stacked on top of my Kino collection and I'm worried about them falling one of these days. <laughs> yes, yes. And the hard part is they put on a sale and it's $50 free shipping. And just to get free shipping, you have like eight titles and, and it's like, how do I have eight titles? I've only spent $53 and suddenly you have another shelf to fill with Kinos out of yeah. two sales. Yeah. Yeah. You the Those sales are, I mean, you end up with so much. <laughs> yeah. Real quick, too. Uh, yes. The, the, yeah. Supposedly, Soderbergh yeah. is working on a box set of his own stuff that's supposed to be coming. That's been hinted at for like a year and a half now. So, yeah. I'd be curious. I um, mean, Kafka is definitely one I think he felt he wanted to get back and right. do again. And also, yeah, uh, Cinema Jimbo, uh, I, I, I will probably be picking up the criterion of it as well. It's worth double dipping. Great film. It's classic. Um, so if you are somebody that when they announced Columbo, you got really excited and then they announced the extras and you were like, Oh my God, that sounds amazing. And then they announced that they clawed them all back. Uh, and you were really upset. The one that I recommend is you go check out night gallery because they did Mm. the exact same treatment that they were giving Columbo. And there is two discs in here and it is, it's ridiculous how much love they show something like night gallery all of these audio commentaries for everything on here um this release and then there's uh one for the second season as well um and i i think there's a third season if i'm remembering right um these releases are just i i I don't even know how to explain it like they take all of the the energy that they could put into something like this and just say yeah let's give them everything that we possibly could and then this comes out and it's like $28, $28, I think. And yeah. it's 400 minutes of content with all kinds of commentaries to double that. Basically it is ridiculous how much you get for getting this. And now on sale, it's even less than $20, I think. And wow. it's, just, it's the perfect way to dive into something that perfectly captured that era of TV and, and night gallery. I mean, like when I was young night gallery, the twilight zone, uh, there's you know three other series that you would just you would fall asleep to and hear as you're falling asleep and just love it yeah the kolchak sets have tons of extras yeah everything on these are like it's it's borderline stupid i i can't even compliment these enough it's just (laughs) 
<laughs> they put so much into these. I I love Kino Lover. Yeah, uh, I gotta. I that's a set I've been eyeing too, uh, and I really got to get the Kolchak set too because I love those movies too. Those movies are so good. Yeah. I'm still um, upset about the Columbo thing. I was really I was looking to get those as well, and without those commentaries, I'm like, I don't know. That's yeah. that's such a drag. That I, that's got to be. It's so painful. Um, I've heard interviews with the with the one of the guys from Kino about it, and it's just right. like what a what a what heartbreak. I mean, they work so hard on all that to just have those have to go away. What a bummer. Yeah. And, all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I did want to say. Um, uh, Reggie says, I believe season season two is much more expensive. Yes, because as Mike says, there's twice as many episodes in season two. So mm-hmm. it's I think that one is either three or four discs, and it's it's way more content. <laughs> Their lobby card offerings are pretty disappointing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bummer. That is a bummer. <laughs> I wish it was thirty dollars for like one. <laughs> well, I mean, for to just be fair, one commentary, you know, that would be. <laughs> That would be better. <laughs> the slip covers are pretty flimsy. It's basically an art card. Yeah, I mean, a lot of the the, the slip covers for for Kino are, you know, they're they're okay. They're okay. Holy hell! Mike just looked it up. Season two is almost twelve hundred minutes versus four hundred eight on season one. Okay. All right. Well, then that makes sense. Um, yeah, that's a lot. So uh, this is like a, a three for for this one because of course you know you got to get your fistful of dollars and a few dollars more and uh good and bad and the ugly um i just went to the vista here in los angeles and they were playing a fistful of dollars and for a few dollars more love these movies forever i'm a big i love spaghetti westerns i love italian cinema in general and so uh they were doing this as a double at the vista now the tarantino owns it and uh i just love these movies so uh you're getting 4k versions of these movies. Like never did I think we get such deluxe right. versions of these movies that, you know, I used to watch on VHS that they were not in great versions. So this is like another big reason why you can, I have so many Westerns that have gotten through Kino, but this yeah. is ones I just wanted to highlight. Cause I, I mean, obviously well known, Central. but this is like, you gotta, you gotta have all those. So this is a, a three for, you gotta get all three. Unfortunately I didn't get the, slipcover for the third one but that's all right yeah i not very many people did i think um it sold out pretty quick and i get it like i i mean but i don't care i really just want the movies ultimately same so like i mean ultimately i I can do with or without uh i i chuckled while you were reading uh through those titles and i was not laughing at you um my phone lit up out of the corner of my eye i glanced at it and uh, i know i mentioned it earlier but just an update it was at 41 comments earlier we're up at 96 since we started the show <laughs> of just hateful ridiculous comments about the half baked sequel i can't wait i can't wait to finish this and then just go on facebook and check out all these comments over um, half baked too it's, guys find something to do guys find something to do it's okay take the rest of the night off you're all right it's all gonna work out Dave oh. Kegner's not going to not deliver, guys. <laughs> I know, be in 27 more movies this year. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so after uh, I, I knew that we were covering the Umbrella announcements tonight, I made it a uh, complete focus to pull this one out first. Because, my goodness, one of the best discoveries I've ever made through Kino was them putting out an exploitation film, which is Stunt Rock. Yep. And, uh, yep. This movie. It it's so good. This movie is perfection. Um, it. How do you describe Stunt Rock? Like it's, everything happens. Yeah, it's uh. Well, it's got a band, and they're all playing their songs. So it's all. It's really a bunch of sort of music videos or performances of this band, and then yep. also stunts. I mean, it's the title does not lie. I also had this too because I had uh the man from Hong Kong through Umbrella nice. and they have like several uh movies from Brian Trenchard Smith who did a couple movies for New World Pictures who did Dead End Drive In and uh es- Escape 2000 aka Turkey Shoot. Um <laughs> we just talking about that one last night. <laughs> oh dude, the, I we haven't even gotten to them yet and I'm like cannot wait. Turkey Shoot is amazing. Such an yep. incredible movie. Um, though I think New World released it as Escape 2000, so they did yeah. the more American trimmed out cut. But Stunt Rock is such a, and great stunts. It's 
it's it's a weird it's a it's a weird movie because it's narratively i don't know there's not a, a lot happening but uh it's riveting it's brian treachard smith is is just one of my one of my favorites and uh i love that film it's a great call it is great. Brian Trenchard Smith is always great. Um, but as uh, I was going to point out, Paul did want to say Grant Page, who is the stuntman in this movie, yeah. passed away overnight, literally this week. Uh, oh. He was he was the stuntman, star of Stunt Rock, and an Aussie film legend. Um, he's done all kinds of stuff. Uh, yep. He's uh, he is Stunt Rock basically. And this yep. movie, again, if you've never seen this. Great extras on here too. They lean hard into the not quite Hollywood documentary, which was a masterpiece. Um, there's an audio commentary from Brian Trenchard Smith on here, who is great at what he does. Loves telling some of the old stories behind the the actual filmmaking. Um, yeah, this is this is a must. Absolutely yeah. adore Snow. Yeah, it's it's a great film. Good good times. Speaking of good movie, and I think this is one that I don't think a lot of people. Uh, are into and of course like i said i love burt reynolds but i don't know if a lot of people are getting into breaking in um oh yeah yeah but i like bill Forsyth. he's a scottish director and um you know he did uh uh local hero uh it's probably one of his his more well-known movies gregory's girl and um he's it this is about uh, an older thief played by burt reynolds and then Casey Zamasco, who uh, Young Guns fans will recognize, uh, and uh, he's like his apprentice, and he's kind of a kind of a bit of an idiot. And it's just sort of a moment in time, which is a lot of what Bill Forsyth's movies are. They're not narratively like big arcs. They're just sort of like here's these characters in this moment of their lives, and uh, I believe it written by John Sayles. Um, uh, and it's like it's a really good movie. I really dug this movie. It's got an audience commentary as well with Bill Forsyth and John Sayles. This is a movie that is, I, I don't think is on a lot of people's radar. And I think it's an excellent movie and just shows you again, the types of movies that Kena releases. Um, they have a lot of Burt Reynolds movies, but I don't think this is the one people are grabbing enough, but <laughs> right. it's a good film. Um, I've never seen that one. Uh, I, I definitely need to pick that one up for sure. It's a it's a good one, and it's like a, a quiet like Burt Reynolds movie, and it feels like a Burt trying to really show like <clears throat> his acting skills, like really trying to you know dig in with a character, yep. and it's it's excellent. I really like it. Um, my last of the main five to talk about. Uh, I probably should have mentioned this after Night Gallery because I kind of already alluded to it tangentially. Uh, it's not the Kolchak set, however, uh, the Night Strangler. This is. A yeah. beautiful release. Um, this is a wonderful 4K restoration. And the big thing, you've got a commentary on here from the man Tim Lucas himself. Uh, th this is a, a great release. Kolchak stuff, again, is like comfort food for so many of us that grew up on it. And Columbo falls right into that. The Night Gallery stuff, it, it's all just sort of in that oeuvre of time where it, it's, it's childhood for me. Like so watching so many of these episodes and then the the film here and then the commentary like tim lucas is so good at what he does i mm. i'm just so glad that it's on there yeah i don't think i have uh the upgrade yet but i have the other movies but i need to i need to get the 4ks yep <laughs> i agree with mike just yeah. throw them in the cart come on yeah uh i may like the second one even more um yeah i i really dug those movies i'm I, and I like the series as well. I've seen, I watched a lot of the shows, but I, ha I don't have the discs yet. So I would love to get commentaries and stuff like that. So yeah, um, those are great picks. I love those movies. And speaking of Burt Lancaster, might as well talk about the train. Nice. Uh, this isn't the 4K, um, which I do want to pick up because this, but this is, this still looks mar like unbelievable. That movie's epic too. It's such a good movie. One of my favorite moments is like a moment where he's up in like a tower and Burt Lancaster runs and he goes down this ladder and the train's coming by and then he runs alongside and jumps on the train. And it's just like one shot and he, you know, he just was doing his own stunts. And you're right. just like, holy shit, ran and jumped on a moving train. Great story about uh, protecting art from the Nazis and uh, that isn't a Indiana Jones movie. And <laughs> <laughs> um it's such a good film and uh, got a great commentary from John, John Frankenheimer. It's an excellent film. I, I, I can't even imagine how good the 4k must look because the Blu-ray right. I think looks fantastic, just beautiful black and white. Um, so I, I will upgrade the 4k eventually, but 
it's an awesome movie if people haven't seen the train well speaking of 4k uh all of my um all of my honorable mentions are 4ks that again the discs are pretty good but i don't think any of these had no none of them have any new features but again kino just quietly killing it with 4ks seemingly every single week and uh ones i recommend highly eastern promises the cronenberg the to live and die in la this 4k looks so much better i haven't could. picked that one up yet because i have the uh what is it the, i think it's the arrow one um yeah the arrow blue from the uk, UK. yeah so i'm like ah, i but i should i love that movie so much and yes, face and face off, of course. John Woo. I mean, I, I I had to. I mean, come on. Yeah, I, I know I'm gonna eventually do it too. Uh, I have it on like another. I think it, it's. I have it on a Blu-ray that I think I got from Hamilton Book that also has uh, Snake Eyes on it. Yep, yep. And so, but so it wouldn't. I don't. I don't feel bad upgrading to the 4K face off, and it's great. Like the action scenes are great. I totally yeah. get people's love of it. It's just this thing is is really. It bothers me still. <laughs> Just, <laughs> and I, I mean, I know that it's part of the fun, but like, how how did they trade faces, but also their physicalities? Because <laughs> they're just they're both too different. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's still fun. Don't, it's still don't question it. <laughs> it's just that John Travolta is much taller. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. So anyway, <laughs> um, uh, for uh, little mentions, right? Uh, we yep. can just uh. I didn't upgrade this yet, but Charlie Varick. Mm, nice. This is a great one with him. Uh, uh, just per, just Walter Matthau, like in the 70s. You you got to get all of that you, that you can. Yep. And I think this is uh, with Don, Don Siegel. Didn't he direct this? That sounds right. Uh, anyway, it's terrific. And I'm probably going to get the 4K eventually. Um, I love this movie since I was a little kid, Running Scared. Um, mm. do not know why we never got a sequel. Uh, running scared her. He, I mean, I we had this on VHS <laughs> and I pretty much memorized the whole movie when I was a kid. Nice. I absolutely love this movie, it's so good. Um, when I moved to Chicago, I actually came out of a, a, a L stop, it was underground, and I walked out and I was in the wrong stop and I was like, oh crap. And then I looked in front of me and it was the building for the end of the film. <laughs> and i just was like oh my god it's a movie from running scared and i walked in just to be like is it the same inside and it was and i was like holy shit everyone's trying to like move on with their lives get in and i'm like walking around this building like holy shit it's the building from running that's scared. great anyway terrific movie i never thought this movie would come out on blu-ray the wildlife i used to have it on vhs mm, yeah I totally get it. If you don't like this movie, uh, the spiritual sequel to fast times at Ridgemont high, um, <laughs> Art Linson, I think had to step in. He was the producer. He had to step in to direct. I'm not sure who was supposed to initially direct this movie. Uh, Eric Stoltz, a uh, uh, young Chris Penn. Uh, me and my brother have seen this movie so many times. I can quote the entire thing and I get it. If you don't like it, I get it. Especially if you're coming at it now, but I just saw this so many times as a kid. And this was one of those movies that just was just like, I just thought it was never going to come out because it had music issues. And I'm not sure if they got every song on here that they had before, right. but um, I, I just love this movie. This is just one of those that I, I get, if you're like, Oh, I hate that movie. I get it. I totally get it. But I love this one. I love it. Nice. Speaking of, I also uh, loved uh, North shore. One of my absolute favorites. I saw it in the movie theater. Uh, I, I bought this day one. I pre-ordered it. I was like, hell yes. North Shore because it has commentaries. It is uh, one of the... Uh, I look at this as not just like a... When I first saw it as a kid, I was like, this is such a Karate Kid knockoff. But it's really yeah. a knockoff of like every 80s theme like that's going on. There's like a Romeo and Juliet aspect. There's like the master teacher thing that's, you know... There's uh, the West Side Story kind of thing, like the you know the the the, the <clears throat> with the with the locals in Hawaii, and I just absolutely love this movie. Turtles the best, you know. <laughs> got you got to love uh, North Shore. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. And then lastly, Treasure of the Four Crowns. Ooh, nice. Uh, this is a fantastically fun film released by Canon. Um, right there at the 3D, 3D craze by Ferdinando Baldi is the director. He actually did the first one, uh, which I think is 
it's not get mean. I have it behind me, but he did. Uh, he did. I'm sorry. I'm forgetting the, the name all of a sudden, but he did another uh, 3d movie, which really set off the craze and um, coming at you. That's what it's called. And uh, then they got, uh, they got Canon and said, come in and make a 3d movie. And this movie is about a, if you've not seen it, have you seen it? I've saw it. Yeah. 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 A, a middle-aged uh, Indiana Jones, guy with like a members only jacket (laughs) walking around through europe like he is the coolest motherfucker in the world he is for a little bit he he is it ends with like a sequence that's completely quiet with them crawling along this rooftop it's just and the and the 3d i love 3d movies uh especially when you aren't watching them in 3d and you can see all the moments they went for it Right. And this and coming at you have so many moments, so many moments of them going, ooh, just stupid stuff thrown <laughs> at the camera. It just doesn't, it never ends being delightful to me. So uh, this is like, a, a, this is a must, this is a must own. Really good 3D sure restoration too, by the way. It is. It's excellent. And I've watched it both ways and it's really, it's really great. Really fun both ways. But sometimes I'm like, like Friday the 13th, the, 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 the 3D, like I don't want to see that one in 3D. It's so right. much fun just to watch how silly it is that they're like, you know, doing the yo-yo or they're doing the different things that you're like, okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, clearly this is just and coming at you, they like they have two scenes where they're like they're dropping beans onto the camera from yep. a bag. It's just like, <laughs> okay. Like you're like, whoa. Like, it's just I don't know. I don't know what they thought our they're almost realistic. Was, but yeah, right. <laughs> That's what I always thought a 3D movie would be about. Anyway, wow. I yeah. So those are just a few selections. And I wanted to make sure that you could all get those. So I think you can definitely still buy all those. So uh, again, uh, kinolorber.com is their website. Uh, sales five to seven times a year, something like that. Yeah. And they are really high quality. Uh, there's some favorites from Ronnie as well. You can, everybody else can share your favorites in the chat if you'd like. Um, last year, literally, I, I don't know if, uh, you know, if you haven't been watching, th- this may not be uh, believable. Kino Lober in the year of 2023 released almost 250 titles last year, which is wow. a real number. And for yeah. one label to be able to do it's, that is it's, it's crazy. Like it's difficult to put out one title a month, and they're doing more than 20 in most months. And it's I've got a bunch of their stuff back here too, like Serpico. Like I just have to rewatch some of these. Like they put out just they put out an unbelievable amount of stuff. Yeah. It's it's insane. And I, I I try to pre-order as much as I can with them. And I totally understand if everybody waits for the sales, but like I'm gonna pre-order the two the Fletch movies. Yep. Like Fletch was like I a already did, yeah. Seminal movie. It, I mean, the sequel's still not that great, but um, but the first movie was like a huge movie in my life. Yeah, it is what definitely sent me to start, you know, wanting to do comedy and wanting to do sketch comedy nice. and stuff. That was the movie that I saw in the movie theater and with my mom and my brother. And it just, it, oh my God, I've never heard a, an audience laugh that much. And it was just like, Oh wow. This is, this is cool as hell. Yeah. So, my, um, go ahead. Oh no, I am just saying, I'm, I'm definitely going to order those cause Holy shit. My, my last note for Kino before we get into vinegar syndrome stuff is if you have not been paying attention to them, because I know they're still kind of underground, Atomic Movie Store. Um, they mm-hmm. are the best place to pre-order Kino titles from. The the standard blues on pre-order are usually it's either fifteen ninety nine or sixteen ninety nine, something like that. Uh, which everyone else has them up for like nineteen ninety nine or even twenty one ninety nine. And then the four Ks they're usually up at either twenty three ninety nine or twenty four ninety nine. When everybody else has them at like twenty six to twenty eight. So no matter what you're saving, and then Atomic Movie Store. They do free shipping after $50. So if you buy two or three, depending on what they are, you're already at that free shipping and you're saving even more. So those titles are, I mean, realistically, like a brand new 4K pre-ordered at like 23 bucks. That's a really great deal for a Kino 4K. Absolutely. Yeah. And their 4Ks are pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, you. I know you said like they had that hard target. They had to do the send the disc out, but they don't have that happen a whole lot. Right. And that happens a lot for 4Ks. It, it just it happens, you know? Um, yeah, it's a big problem. Um, anyways. Yeah. Gina Davis time. is great in uh, in the first Fletch. The, everybody's great. Now, actually, Gina really, Davis uh, is always great. 
confess fletch really got the shaft i really yep. i enjoyed the hell out of that and it was i've been waiting for that movie in so long it definitely went back to the books i don't know if you read the books but when i was a kid seeing fletch i started buying all the books i started i went heavy into it and um and it's much more like the books than the movies that you know the original fletch which is more geared right. really towards uh chevy chase but um but yeah, that, that 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 I don't know what happened with Confess Fletch. Uh, I think it was like wasn't that Miramax that put that out? Like Miramax that still exists, or and they just yeah. dumped it in like a couple theaters and then threw it on streaming. It was it's, it's such a bummer because it's a, actually a really it's really good, and it they could have been making a sequel by now if they hadn't completely botched the release. It was Paramount actually. Was it? Yeah. Uh, and you can go and uh, buy the Blu-ray right now for twenty-eight bucks. Twenty-eight bucks. Well, it's really going to cut into my venomous budget, but <laughs> <Let's> see. <laughs> hmm. Oh man, how uh, do I get both? I don't know. On the note of venomous, it is time to talk about vinegar syndrome. Uh, yeah, I I don't think we planned on you being here for the uh, flash pre-order event, um, but. I'm, I'm awesome. Here. I'm, so I'm very honored to be here on this night. This is awesome. <laughs> uh, so vinegar syndrome. How how many do you got from them? How do you feel about vinegar syndrome as a boutique? Uh, yeah. What what can you tell us? The, I'm on my third year as a subscriber, so I'm clearly uh, I'm in. And you know we we've I think we've talked before. Like yep. you know they you get to get a lot of the the partner label stuff. Um, Though I'm now trying to, I don't, I don't have the the uh, latest one from Death Crocodile because I want to order directly from them. But, um, but you know, you get some of the partner labels, you get all that the discount, you get, you know, when the sales come by, I don't even think about them because I'm like, meh. Is there anything I haven't gotten, that, right? You know, that's outstanding that I need to pick up. But I, you know, you already get those prices, so I'm, I mean, I, I'm bought in, and I just watched. Um, just in advance because i was curious how it was i think it's dr horrible's house of terrors or something like that yeah house of horrors dude it's so good i had never seen it and it's awesome it's such a good movie I really enjoyed the hell out of it so um yeah so i mean i'm i'm all in on on vinegar syndrome uh what have been some of your uh favorite recent releases from them other than uh this one that just got announced uh, like I, he just said 4K for Dr. Terror's House of Horrors that's the first amicus title in 4K they beat any hammer titles to 4K Yeah that's I'm I'm excited for that one to show up uh, obviously I think I haven't been able to watch it again but I'm get, the fact that we got Existens is pretty dope I'm a big Cronenberg yeah. fan that's pretty incredible Um I'm just looking down through uh ones I have here uh i enjoyed the black room did you watch that one i've not got to it yet but man everybody is uh stoked it's, it's on that for pretty sure. good it's a pretty good one man i i it's it's movies like that that um vinegar syndrome will just have one of those that i have just never heard of my favorite from like last year was i think or maybe the year before was alien private eye yeah Oh my God. I love that movie. I've watched it so many times. It's such, it's, <laughs> it's just an amazing. And, and again, one of those things that like, when you see the interview with the director, he's so earnest. He just was trying to make this movie. Like he, he just believed in this idea and he's so stoked that people are like interviewing and talking to him about this movie. It's like, it, it, it makes you an even bigger fan of the film because you're right. just like, hell yeah. Look at this guy. You know, like I, I'm, I had loved the movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, let me see mutant hunt. I'm just trying mm. to go off the top of my head. That was, I really enjoyed that one. Um, I'd already seen uh, Mother's Day. Mother's Day is okay. I'm, I'm, I'm excited for them to kind of run through some of their trauma things and just kind Still of. Still wild that we it. got that in 4K. That is crazy. That is crazy. And Rabbit Grannies. Um, it's amazing we've gotten those. Uh, I loved, I went through and burned through all the prophecies like right away when that, nice. when that came out. I, think that is great i love that box art because i held on to my blade in the dark which i think is fine yeah i dug it but i love the box yeah so when prophecy showed up like that i was like okay this is you know i don't i still haven't gotten rid of my <laughs> uh my copy of blade in the dark because I, I i don't know i still kind of like it it's not it's not the best yellow ever but i don't know for a, a tv movie that they kind of piece together i don't know it's not bad right um but yeah um those are some of the recent ones. Oh, Night Screams. That's a good one, too. That's a good one. Um, 
Uh, steel and lace. Yes. Yes. I love steel and lace. We talked about that on our, on our podcast. Nice. As a nearly new world, because a lot of people from new world worked on that one. It was sort of when they were already out of theatrical, but I feel like if they hadn't, uh, sort of gone under, they would have made steel and lace. I think that's one that's kind of unsung. Like I, I think they still have, or no, they, they recently put that on sale to try to get rid of like that. They still had the slip for that one. I right. didn't, I, I couldn't believe that one hadn't sold out already. Uh, so there are, uh, some things getting announced tonight. Keep in mind the, the website is not going on sale. This is a flash pre-order event for items that will be released at the end of May. If you've never done this before, I, I understand this whole event is a little bit confusing, but basically it's just a way for them to hype up what is coming as part of their halfway to black Friday sale. So as you'll see, uh, it says titles will be revealed. We've got, uh, the next VSU is going to be revealed, which will be a 4k release. Um, the next cinematograph that will be, well, not the next, cause they're actually announcing one on, uh, April 1st as well. This will be mm. the fifth one that's coming out in May. Mm. They're revealing that tonight. Uh, the fourth one will be announced on April 1st. Um, there will be discounted pre-orders so you can get the bundle and it'll be just a little bit cheaper than if you get it in, in May. Uh, and if you're a subscriber, you already get everything except for the VSU and the cinematograph. Um, mm -hmm. if you order this weekend, you get double VSMC points. Uh, which is cool if you're going in for some of the discounts or some of the extras and all that stuff. Um, one thing we do know is getting announced tonight is China O'Brien 1 and 2 4K. Uh, they announced that a little bit ahead of time because Eureka is releasing it as well. Um, but other than that, we've gotten a couple hints. Uh, we've gotten the fact that the next VSU is an Orion Pictures action movie with uh, big stars. And there's not... I mean, there's there's a lot of Orion titles, obviously, but there's yeah. not there's not a lot that I would say are action epics with big stars. Yeah, and there's there's really only probably five or eight that it, I would really think they would go with that type of clue. But like, they're not going to put out the Terminator. I, I, I no, mean, that would be mind blowing. Right, right. <laughs> but no, it's not that. And also, I would say probably like at for at the time they weren't really huge stars. Right. I mean, they became them off of that movie. I mean, I guess Arnold maybe off of Conan, but I mean, um, they, I mean, I just, I don't know if that's, I know, I, I don't, I didn't even think it was that one. I just thought, no, they can't be doing the Terminator. There's already so many versions of that out there already. Right. I would be very curious what they would do with it, but, um, uh, yeah, the, the running guess right now is it's going to be Navy SEALs. That's uh, that's the big one that everybody seems to be landing on. But didn't they say from the eighties? Uh, I don't remember if they gave a year for the VSU. Okay, I may be wrong. I, I've I got to admit I've not paid attention to the emails all that much. Big uh, action with lots of stars. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Oh, all they said was the gold. Oh, that's right. It, it was the golden age of Orion Pictures. Right. That's why I guess I thought the 80s, because they're talking about the golden age. Right, right. Um, well, probably the couch trip. <laughs> That's <laughs> it's an action classic. Uh <laughs> oh Ryan. Oh man. Uh is it no the... way it could it be no way out? I mean possible. Uh, Maddie's asking, are they doing horror anymore for VSAs? Not, I mean, not really sometimes, but not, not certainly not very often. Um, <laughs> got some love for the couch trip. Love the go. couch trip. I think, yeah, and I think, um, oh, that's right. No way oh, out is coming okay. from Kino. And I think couch trip came out by Kino as well. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ryan. <laughs> Uh, a Wishmaster yeah. three could. I mean that that's already been put out by. Um, um, there's a Wishmaster set, right? From uh, Vestron, right? Vestron, yeah. So that's Lionsgate. Yeah, and as long as they still have it, which they should. Oh yeah, I imagine they they um, have the catalog. It's I think. the studio, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They really they that better. that Vestron got like bought up by somebody else who got bought up by Lionsgate. So that's right. how that all graduated to them. Uh, dude McMahon says weird. I just watched Navy seals a couple weeks ago for the first time in 30 years. Charlie Sheen is still really annoying. Oh yeah. Yeah. I don't know about, uh, 
Navy SEALs, but I mean, it, it's a good guess. It's a good guess. Sibner says the guess on Cinematograph is Dangerous Game. Huh. Uh, interesting. Was there, see, was there a clue for the Cinematograph? Because I don't remember there being a clue even for that. How would there be a guess? Did they... Did Justin not want to put one out after everybody guessed going going south? That I mean, that one was so obvious, though. <laughs> the art for that was very clearly, very clearly going south. The main thing is is the action uh, movie aspect, because there's lots of movies that Orion put out that I, I was looking through initially to try and think, well, what could it have been? But some of them, I'm like, I don't know if this is an action classic. Like the Falcon right. and the Snowman is a great movie. I'm not sure that's an action film. No, I wouldn't really call it that. So, and a lot of these have been done. So it's kind of does uh, does Kino still have the FX rights? Oh yeah, I believe so because that wasn't that long ago. But that's not maybe huge stars either. No, um, not, at least not at the time for sure. Yeah, Brian Brown was you know big enough to uh, because of um, a movie we just talked about. Uh, some of his Australian movies, uh, Breaker Morant. We just talked well, about uh, because that was released by New World Pictures in the U.S. It is time, so now we can know. Uh, there's Let's the find out China O'Brien and uh, Navy Seals 4K there it is. for the VSU. Yeah. They had it. Da- dangerous game for Cinematograph and Homegrown Horrors Volume Three. Uh, and then on top of that, there are the uh, secret releases. We're going to go through all of them together. Figure this out now. So uh, Navy Seals, this is the next VSU. Um, let's see what all they're going to show. Okay. So yeah, uh, I'll leave it there. I don't think there's anything major bad in Navy SEALs I can't show. Anyways, um, this will be <laughs> limited to 10,000 units. Uh, Lewis Teague's big budget war epic starring Charlie Sheen, Michael Bean, Bill Paxton, and more hits 4k from VSU. Uh, then we've got newly scanned and restored in 4k. It's going to be a two disc set with HDR, Newly produced featurettes with Louis Teague himself, actor Nicholas Caddy, screenwriter Gary Goldman, and more. The exact extras will be announced later. Um, then the artwork, uh, like I already showed, looks decent. Yeah. Uh, you, not not mind-blowing, but, uh, I mean, it's very Navy SEALs. Louis Teague is a guy who started at New World Pictures back in the Corman era doing some editing and uh then started doing second unit stuff he directed uh lady in red from a john sales script um but i we we talked about um cockfighter and he is the guy who filmed all the cockfights for cockfighter because monty helmet didn't really want to i wonder why so (laughs) so he sent lewis teague um and then they did alligator together another great alligator film Absolutely. Uh, so China O'Brien one and two, this is coming in 4k same as, uh, uh, Eureka. This will likely be a slightly different restoration because VS usually does their own restoration work, even on shared titles like that. So this is a three disc set presented in HDR, uh, new commentary tracks for each film by Frank Jang and John Charles. That's rad. Uh, new, uh, 19 minute interview with Cynthia Rothrock, new featurette with Richard Norton, Keith Cook, and Chris Casamasa. New interview with Melanie Good. New interview with the casting director, Katrine McGregor. New featurette with the composers. uh, Archival making of Doc. A couple archival video interviews with Cynthia Rothrock and Richard Norton. Uh, Those are from the Cynthia Rothrock YouTube channel. And then uh, some trailers and all that good stuff. Um, We've seen the art a couple times, so nothing really super surprising there. But this is in the, the subscription? Yes, this yeah. is in the subscription, so you okay, will be good. getting this. So I'll be getting this. Uh, I probably would pick it up. I wonder, do does Vinegar Syndrome, do they know in advance they're going to release this? So they could have just, or do they just keep knocking back on Cynthia Rothrock's door? Like, hey, we got to do another interview. Um, is it cool? <laughs> is it cool? Do you still, are Thursdays still good? Or <laughs> <laughs> I know we already met last week. Because right. uh, they keep interviewing you for all these releases. I got to think they did it all at once, but I don't know. But this seems like a far way out to have known. But uh, Simner says, check out those secret surprise hands. Let's skip forward to that before we go to Homegrown Horrors Volume 3. 
So secret flash release title hints. Uh, not swayed by our latest trio of deep cut regional 80s horror with uh, Homegrown Horrors Volume 3. Blah, blah, blah. China O'Brien. Never fear as our duo of uh, secret surprise releases will surely satiate your appetite for some of the wildest genre cinema of the 70s and 80s. One offers a mouthwatering classic from a regional auteur, which has been meticulously restored from its lost for decades camera original for Blu-ray, while the other is a masterpiece of big budget nonstop thrill ride from a perfect storm of producer, director, and star who all but reinvented this uniquely 80s genre for 4K and blue. Hmm. I, I almost feel like that uh, that wording of perfect storm is there for a reason. There's got to be a hint in that. Sat satiate your appetite? That could be a part of it, yeah. Mouth-watering mm -hmm. as well? Yep. Uniquely 80 genre. What I mean, there's a lot that that could be. Uh, all right. So while we think on those, let's take a look at Homegrown mm. Horrors Volume 3. Uh, man, some wild art on this box. Interesting. Uh, so this one is going to have... Uh, Kicking off the collection is Christopher Lewis's Grizzly Oklahoma Lens Supernatural Slash Revenge, starring Patrick Wayne and John Carradine in the midst of a rural cult of Satan-loving killers who use the black arts to wreck, uh, to wreck havoc. I'm surprised they didn't use the word reek. Uh, wreck havoc on anyone who gets in their way. Uh, enjoy this gruesome classic, newly restored from its 16 millimeter original negative with all its bloody effects looking better than ever. Next up is Doug Robertson's Kentucky-based revenge slasher, Haunted Ween. They did uh, announce this title earlier this year, so I'm glad that's here in this box. This takes the Halloween spirit to newly vengeful heights as a fraternity party becomes a night of bloody mayhem when a mass stalker begins dismembering the guest. Packed with local flavor and a good sense of fun, this truly regional passion project comes to Blu-ray, restored in 4K from its 16mm camera negative, packed with new and archival bonus features. Uh, and then from Michael O'Rourke, the man behind the previous HGH's sleeper hit Moonstalker, comes another, though earlier demented, Reno shot slasher with the ghostly romance, Deadly Love. After her lover is murdered, a scorned woman summons his presence from the grave. Years later, his ghost still haunts the house of his lover's untimely demise, where he murders anyone who makes the mistake of entering the property. Enjoy this offbeat regional rarity, newly restored from 16 millimeter inner positive. Includes hours of newly produced extras, uh, three disc set, exact extras to be announced later. Um, gosh, there's a lot to love in these sets, that's for sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm into the Haunted Ween. I remember when they men mentioned that. So that seems to be like a, <laughs> that's an early favorite out of this set. I probably shouldn't go through all of these, but uh, I'm going to try to go through as many as I can and hope for the best from the YouTube gods. <laughs> uh, the coloring in this one looks great. Revenge. These look pretty good. Yeah, I mean, for uh, homegrown horrors, 16 millimeter stuff, the pictures on this are crazy clear. Wow. Really good effects, too. Huh. No nudity. I can show them all. That's wild. <laughs> that is wild. <laughs> and potentially disappointing. <laughs> uh, Ronnie says, uniquely 80 genre. Does that equal lots of hairspray? I mean, that's quite possible. Uh Yes, Dan. I'm sure they meant Reek as well. That was the that was the point. Um, cinematograph release, Dangerous Game. This one is going to be blue. Uh, this one, let's see. Uh, man, decent art. I, I have you picked up any of the cinematograph releases yet? Yes. Yeah, I have uh, Little Darlings, and I had already picked up Red Rock West from Umbrella, but I may still grab it. I may still yeah. double dip. I wanted they to keep, are... get the the John Dahl uh, commentary and stuff. Yeah, uh, on from the Umbrella one, but um, those boxes they, they are so nice. Yeah, They're really, really excellent. And I'm curious about the the difference in the picture quality as well. Uh, so this one, newly scan and restored in 4K from the 35 millimeter OCN. Uh, we don't have the exact extras yet. Uh, it's going to have numerous interviews with its cast and crew. And uh, this is this is a big one. Uh, Abel Farrar's uh, 
dangerous game propelled by fearless performances from uh, Harvey Keitel. Wow. Don't know why I said it like that. Harvey Keitel, Madonna, and Nancy Ferrara, James Russo. I mean, this is this is a big one for a lot of people. Yeah, I have not seen this one. I don't think. Um, oh, Wave is pointing out the cinematograph seems to be going 4K, then blue, then 4K, then blue. Huh. huh. So that means... Uh, the next well, one, well... I, I guess it would be thrown off possibly by whatever is getting announced on April 1st. Sibner has the olive release for this. God, I don't think this is one I've seen from. I can't remember if I've seen this one or not yet. Uh, man, this is this is pretty neat though. Sometimes in the package they put other clues. Let me see if we got different clues on those secret titles. Uh, what about the two secret titles? One offers mouthwatering classic from a regional auteur. Nope, that's the exact same thing. <laughs> uh, Reinvented this uniquely 80s genre. I, I still want to know what that means. Uniquely 80s genre. There, there's like 19 things. Oh, no. I think I have seen this one. I have seen Dangerous Game. I'm Now that I'm looking at the original box art. Because Madonna's in it. Right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. I've seen this one. It's been a long time. But yeah. Okay. So it's like the new art is so so great, but I'm like, God, that's not ringing a bell. And I see the old art, and I'm like, okay, all right, that's right. I remember this one. <laughs> uh, trying trying to do some research right now. What's this? Signal? <laughs> uh, I guess you have to report to the emergency room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, how's everybody feel about the slate? Uh, China O'Brien 1 and 2, of course, we knew about. Navy Seals 4K from VSU. Homegrown Horrors Volume 3 is pretty big. Uh, and then the Cinematograph. But then also, I mean, two mystery titles. We got a blue and a 4K. Um, sounds pretty interesting. Yeah. that it, I mean, I don't think I've even gotten to my second Homegrown Horrors set. So that's I definitely got to change that so, <laughs> so I can be ready for the third one. Yeah. Navy Seals, uh, I remember it. It's it's okay. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm intrigued by the from the Lewis Teague aspect, uh, but you know, it's been a long time since I've seen it, but I don't remember loving that one. But um, hey Zach, the China O'Brien ones, that. like that's you know, they're they're okay. You know, they're not my favorite Rothrock ones, but I mean, but they're also be, about to be released by Eureka too, so. Yeah, which I do. I love Eureka. I almost picked them instead of uh, uh, Kino. Instead but, of Kino. <laughs> but Kino has such variety. And yeah. and um, Eureka has been sort of going pretty heavy on the Asian cinema stuff, which is not a complaint by any stretch. But, you know. Just it's hard thought, to have a good variety there. Yeah. 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 So I think a lot of my favorite Eureka discs are out of print at this point, too. Yeah, that also that's also an issue too, and I agree. Ten k of Navy Seals, that's that's a lot. They're expecting a pretty heavy volume of people buying that one. So, well, most of their VSUs have been around ten or twelve thousand. Uh, I think, mm. I think uh, uh, Six String Samurai might have only been six or seven thousand, but uh, yeah, I mean that one will be available for a long time. Legend of Billy Jean. Um, hmm. As the uniquely 80s genre, I assume. Yeah. I don't know if it has anything to do with the food stuff, but that would be terrific if that happened to be. That's a great movie. Yeah. Uh, Although I, I feel like the Legend of Billy Jean, didn't that get a, a Mill Creek release fairly recently? Yeah. It's on like some 80s compilations and stuff. That's right. how I have it. Yeah. But again, you can get off of Hamilton book. But right. I, yeah, Pat, Navy Seals is not great, but what about Navy Seals? Isn't there a sequel too? Like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I got to think that's even worse. Uh, feels like they couldn't give away Six String Samurai with how long it was there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that did take some time. Dude McMahon, uh, there was a real life Navy SEAL who said the only scene in that movie that was remotely realistic was when they were getting drunk. <laughs> uh, 
Mike wants somebody to do a Miss 45 release. Well, uh, me, there was. Yeah, me too. Obviously, there was the Draft House release, but on top of that, there was a German release that keeps popping up at Orbit and Diabolic as well. Mm. So you may want to keep an eye out for that if you are just looking for the film. Uh, incredible movie, obviously. And it feels like one, though, they're going to do somebody's going to pick up and do here. I mean, yeah, I imagine somebody will do a 4K of Miss 45 eventually. That movie is so damn good. Yeah, I just, yeah, I I feel like we, we there's a Bella Ferrara movies that I feel like they're going to get into. They already did, uh, what, King of New York. I feel like we're we're due. Yeah, Arrow for, did that one. Yeah. And then 101 just released in the UK the, uh, what is the name of, is it Fear City or Night of... Yeah, Fear City. Yeah. Um, but supposedly, I guess there's an issue with that disc. Uh, they, they did the wrong aspect ratio or something like that. Oh, uh oh. Yeah. I, has anybody picked that one up yet? Anybody know what's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pornos. I mean, do his porns. Yeah. Vinegar Syndrome's in a very unique position to be able to appease all of the fans of Abel Ferrara and his many different films. That's so, true. Very true. What is... Yeah. Uh, man, I'm trying to look up what was the issue with that Fear City disc. Does anyone have uh, suggestions on the other the other two movies? Yeah, I, I would love to hear about that. Uh, Sibner, I don't think there's going to be a replacement disc. One of the cuts just uh, is on the disc with the wrong aspect ratio, and they're probably not going to fix it. That's kind of... 101 has kind of been iffy on quality king of new york was done on 4k by arrow and it's a great looking disc by the way that movie looks incredible in 4k somebody suggested firewalker uh i could see that maybe excellent i have fear city on vhs and have wanted on 4k forever I, uh, I know that Shout Factory for uh, Fear City has been out of print for quite some time now. I imagine the, the want on that title is great, especially if 101 Films is going to mess it up a bit. Mm. That's never a good sign either. When it's a from a really important director on a title people want, and then you screw the pooch. Yeah, that is a bummer. That is a bummer. But maybe somebody will do it domestically? Or was that also through their U.S. line? No, it was only through the UK. I, I imagine somebody will do it eventually. And it, it probably should be a 4K. I don't think they did a new restoration at all. It was only with uh, what the studio gave them. I don't think 101 Films has ever done a restoration themselves at all. Mm. Yeah, I don't think Yeah, I don't know. Well, they may have done the last broadcast, now that I think about it. Yeah, I mean, I, I can see how some people are getting a little bummed, but I think the homegrown horror stuff uh, always i mean the first set was just that's so the good. exciting one for me i mean that's 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 going to be so interesting and i think the channel brands are going to be fun to watch um yeah i kind of i guess i'm in it again this is that unique position when you when you subscribe that i'm like you know i'm i'm already getting them so i'm like okay cool right but, you know if i was thinking what am i gonna buy I mean, I don't know. I, I might wait on the sale for the China O'Briens because, again, they're not my... I mean, I think most of the really good Cynthia Rothrock stuff has been out or it's really her 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 early Hong Kong stuff. Yep. Um, and if they wanted to release... Uh, if they wanted to release these, that would probably be cool. Which oh yeah, which I know it got released again from somebody else, but Tiger Claws, those are pretty fun. Yep. Um, Undefeatable, that was really good. Uh, but again, all those movies kind of at least Channel O'Brien is her. I mean, right. a lot of the other movies are she's sort of like the second banana, and she doesn't get to do as much, which is kind of a drag. But, yeah. Uh. And Navy Seals, it feels like everyone's going to buy that one. Yeah, I mean, it's a VSU with a, with a bunch of big names. I mean, what's not to love there? I mean, sure, the movie's not perfect, obviously, but yeah. Um, 
Oh yeah, totally agree here, Mike. Mike says homegrown whores and dangerous game are the two that I'm excited for, but I'm sure at least homegrown horror will last until next year when it's 50%. Um, yeah, and yeah. that should be 50% in November, so not next year necessarily, unless they change that up again. Um, or wait, did they change it on the last sale? I feel like they may have. Uh, Jake says this homegrown horror set might be my favorite to date. Haunted Ween is a regional classic, but both Revenge and Deadly Love are underrated. Uh, maybe a body double. That would be insanity. Waiting for I an able box set. That that was only released in the UK, body double, right? Uh, I, I, I mean, I know it was released in the UK. I feel like uh oh it had a uh twilight time here i think oh okay okay uh yes twilight time but that came out oh jesus that was one of the earlier ones that came out 2013 hmm yeah i don't know if it will be a half off in november new november this third set but it should be right because it's well, is it six months? Isn't that it, what they do? They it used back? to only be five months, basically, or four months. And then I think they might have just changed it. And now it's like seven months, so it doesn't include the previous sale title. I'm not sure how they're doing it anymore. They hmm. uh, Obviously, they got a little bit bigger, a lot more popular, and they had to do something to hold on to not losing all that sure. money on, on sale stuff. But that's tough. It's a balancing act at this point, especially when you're literally training everybody that's buying your stuff to wait for every sale. Right, right. Which a lot of people do. And right. I get it. It's a lot because you're blind buying a lot of the time, you know? Yeah. Um, so I get it. But that's why I just subscribed. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's better than blind buying uh, one or two titles and, at a time, but then blind buying 37 of them? Blind buying all of them. <laughs> <laughs> why only get a few when I can get all of them? Right. That's why Criterion rules, says David. I mean, yeah, but I, they've kind of been training everybody to wait for sales their entire life as a uh, company at this point. Yeah, the Hong Kong, I, I haven't watched that one. The volume one, they haven't done a yeah. volume two yet. Not Have yet. You watched that? Have you watched that first one? I watched. I, I I didn't finish the box set. I think I've watched one or two of them, and they're decent. They're not like top of the genre or anything like that, but they're decent. There's one I think that's supposed to be like really good in it. Yeah. So, um, but they had like two box sets that they put out last year as well, like the um, the Mexican horror, gothic yeah. horror one. And I mean, they had some pretty good. Those are pretty good. Those yeah, were pretty good. Sure. You know, they did some good stuff, so. Oh, God, Simner speculating Bloodsport now. That would be, that would be an impressive release, although I think a lot of people might be a little upset because they all bought that Cape Light uh, release in the UK or Germany. Has that not gotten out here in the US? No. But where's, not at all. The, what's the, the wet, my, the appetite and the, the sort of food related hints that they have there? That's yeah, there's two. Me... That's a good call. Um, I, I mean, Vinegar Syndrome is very vague with their hints on purpose. Sure, too. sure. Well, and one thing, uh, one thing that we probably should point out: the secret titles. They're normally not giant titles. Uh, if anything, <laughs> right? One right. of one of them is. Uh, they're both not going to be like massive mainstream blockbuster titles uh for for the for the secret titles you're you're usually talking about like a oh that's interesting type of reveal sure um, yeah nothing insane is it some sort of like a cannibal film or something or i mean i just thought under siege but i was like <laughs> to your point like i don't think they're gonna put out something that big no you know? probably not you know i would love it but you know but that's okay i get it uh, Wave says, was Existenza secret title last year? I believe it was, yes. Yeah, and so, it was. Like I'm saying, one of them may be a big title, but it's it's certainly never two. Right. We're under Siege is Warner Brothers, yeah. That's right. So, maybe you get one of those Warner Brother classics. Maybe they'll 
get it get it from them under siege warner archive <laughs> warner archives yeah <clears throat> get that fresh pressed blu-ray from them <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think this is certainly the most exciting for me this month, Dangerous Game. Let me take a look at these wide. Artwork do you feel... subject to change. That's interesting. Yeah, and they I think they did that for um, uh, Showgirls, and I don't think it changed at all. I hope is... it doesn't. It's The artwork is great. Yeah. How, how do you feel about that cinematograph packaging? Oh, my God. That's why I'm thinking of getting... Uh... You know, double dipping because I mean, it's it is it's really something. Like the little darlings package is just it's awesome. And yeah. The booklet and the I mean, it's really cool. And uh, I mean, they Vinegar Syndrome's released some very cool uh, box, you know, some boxes and stuff, and they're always on top of that. But but man, their boxes are unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that'd be. F- freaking hilarious wave uh funny enough i just recorded a podcast talking about that movie too with will um yeah uh hmm. i mean hmm. <laughs> these are these are interesting at least and it's it's a very vinegar syndrome slate they obviously seem to be moving in a in a direction here um they're leaning into the action uh which they had not done for years it was more um more horror heavy-handed more genre related which I mean, some action movies fall into the genre category, but um, yeah, stuff like this is is interesting. Yeah, I I, w- I wish they would. All, I mean, I know everyone's kind of doing this, but they, when, their release of the Iceman Cometh was fantastic. I wouldn't yeah. mind if they kind of decided to do a few more from like Hong Kong and stuff because they've, you know, that was an awesome. That was an excellent release. Well, and when you think about it, like we've had. Gosh, I think we're at like seven boutique labels that have really focused on the martial arts titles a lot over the last few years. And a lot of them have been very specifically region B and granted rights cost a lot to get it in the U S but that doesn't mean that we won't get some of those titles in region a, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, you know, vinegar syndrome could always get Ricky O maybe, or, uh, the seventh curse, uh, 88 films had done both of those. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. Uh, I have both. I have both of those. Those are great movies. Gosh, what is uh, uh, Robo Tricks? That was Robo Tricks. Yep. Um. Yeah. There's a handful of them that I would not be surprised at all if they got some of these. Yeah, the domestic rights to those. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of surprised they don't. But I, I mean, I do like the direction of like something like a Navy Seals. I totally remember that being a big success in the VHS days. Yeah. I understand the appeal of that one. Um. So if they are in China, O'Brien, both of those being really from that era, but like, yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to see what else they, they go down that path. There's, there's plenty of other stuff they could put out. Humboldt says another Cronenberg secret title. I would bet probably not. Uh, I don't think Existence is normally done in like a package deal type of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I don't think we're going to get another Cronenberg anytime soon. Maybe fast company. I mean, Maybe. Uh, the the hard part, though, is I don't see that. I mean, under the Cronenberg name, it could have some appeal, but it's not one that's got the appeal of Existence. No. I, yeah, I get it. I get it. It's a pretty good movie, though. Uh, Spider can use a Blu-ray. That did it not get any Blu-ray? What, what year was Spider? Was it 2002? Yeah, Spider's out on Blu-ray right now from Sony Pictures Classics. Yeah. Uh, Blue Underground still has it. Still has what? Which one are we talking about? Yeah, so... They didn't put out Spider, Blue Underground. No. No, not at all. Um, Yeah, Spider's currently in print from Sony Pictures Classics. That's not coming. Yeah. And in fact, I, I think at this point, I think M. Butterfly was the last uh uh i think it was oh, the last oh. Cronenberg to go to blu-ray yeah he's he's to blue underground he's talking about his fast company i don't know if they still oh, yeah. have i don't know if they still have it because they i mean they haven't done like that they haven't, i would think they would do a 4k of that already if they still had it 
You would think. You would think. I mean, God, and that Blu-ray came out in 2009. A long time ago. And it's it's out of print. It's it's going for 50 bucks on Amazon. Oh, really? Yeah. This one? <laughs> With the... Uh... I've got it up there, too. With the original shorts? Yep. That yeah. has nothing to do with the movie, if you've watched the shorts. His most recent film. Crimes Hard of the Future. Agree there, Wave. Uh, we definitely need the fly on 4K. Yeah. I, I that, that fly set is not bad from Chow Factory, just to give them some love. But also, that's about to go out of print, too. That's in their going out of print section right now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, then, yeah, 4K incoming then. Well, not necessarily. That's a, I believe that's a Fox title. Oh, oh, well, that so makes going, it, that going makes out of it print difficult. could mean never going out of release print. again. <laughs> going out of, well, maybe <laughs> Sony, maybe Sony can help us out here. Maybe getting, uh, if now they're going to be in charge of all the Disney stuff. We'll see. I think they got to make Disney some money first. Yeah. Well, uh, not a lot of uh, chatter in, in the chat on this, unfortunately. So it seems like some people are not super stoked on it. That, that Simner, this isn't the short set. This is Fast Company that also had the shorts. I don't know if I'm misunderstanding you. He, he may be talking to me because he says we've gone over that. Oh, I don't know I what he's saying. Uh, I'm getting dangerous game, but that's all. Yeah, I get that. Uh, see, and I still think uh, Humboldt Horse says looking for Mr. Goodbar, no chance. I mean, there was that hint from from that Oscar video last year, but uh, supposedly Justin has said definitively it is not coming on Cinematograph. That doesn't mean Vinegar Syndrome doesn't have it, but um, I don't know. I mean, it really sounds like he's saying it's definitely not coming. Hmm. either way um yeah homegrown horror is the one i'm most excited for uh the 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 low budget auteur stuff is always fun yeah yeah dangerous game i i probably need to look at the trailer just to remind myself what the movie is but um i really like what they're doing so far i really like what justin's doing with that label so you know I, I, I may I may have to do it. I mean, yeah the the packaging is always great from Cinematograph. The titles he's choosing, I I've been I've been mostly impressed with Cinematograph stuff so far. If uh, I recall, this is like a this is one where Madonna's really trying to to show she can act in this one. Yeah. Um, if I recall this one, and this isn't the Willem Dafoe one that she did with the candles. No, <laughs> this is not that kind of thing. This is definitely a, a much grittier performance from her. Dude, McMahon says I may pick up Navy Seals when they drop it to ten dollars with eighty five hundred copies left. I That's mean, not going to happen, probably. I mean, not until like twenty twenty six or something when they're like having right. yeah, mean, did you know? I mean, can you wait that long? Are you ready to wait that long? <laughs> uh Sibner's asking, is it still three times points this weekend? I believe it's two times points. I, I may have misread, but I thought it was double points. Yes, body of evidence. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's standing up for it. <laughs> I, I my my apologies. I apologize, Sibner. I didn't I didn't mean to disrespect body of evidence. <laughs> Oh, that's the one hilarious. with the candles. I really, Chad, get your shit together. I I agree. <laughs> I agree, Sidner. Oh man. All right. Uh, well, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, any any other thoughts? Any other any other uh, guesses? Yeah. I can't really sit here and look it all up, but I'm curious if everybody has good guesses. <laughs> Body of evidence is objectively bad, but Willem Dafoe and Wax. I mean, you could have just stopped at Willem Dafoe. I don't. I don't think any movie Willem Dafoe is th that bad, and he's still pretty good in that movie. But he is always good. He's always good. 
a lost in the whole poor things thing is how amazing Willem Dafoe is in that movie. His prosthetics in that movie, man, are that I, special, like a very 80s feeling when they went for it. And just who cares that it's not going to be perfect because that's kind of the point for this. And it just looked incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I, <laughs> but what's with the, 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 the I feel like those the uh, two different hints about you wet your appetite and everything that's got to be leaning somewhere. I mean, yeah, it very well could be. Yeah, body of evidence says Julianne Moore. It has a lot going for it. <laughs> a, re- a real body of evidence, Stan. This is similar. This is great. I'm. This is awesome. I love it. I love it. Stand behind that film. The way that they say nonstop thrill ride from a perfect storm of producer, director, and star. I wonder if it's. Uh... Oh gosh, don't start saying bad taste, Simner. You're gonna make everybody think it's actually coming. It's, but it, he, Peter Jackson has all those, doesn't he? I mean, he's keeping those under lock and key. Is well, he's supposedly been working on them or about to work on them since, yeah, like long before the Beatles thing started. Yeah, he's worse than Jim Cameron, but at least Jim Cameron's finally delivering, right? So, because I would love to see his early stuff, I'd love bad taste. So the way they say the perfect storm of produce what what is the clue the perfect storm of producer director and Mouth star modern and classic okay from a regional auteur. Hmm. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, the way they write perfect storm of producer director and star. I think that's a weird order to say that in. So maybe it's somebody that produced the perfect storm. Who's the producers on that? Barry Levinson's one of them. Hmm. Yes, it is two different films, of course. A nonstop thrill ride from a perfect storm. Is it perfect storm? Did they just give it away? Um... (laughs) Pat wants to know how it's going south. Uh, I've not watched the brand new disc, but um, I remember liking it fine. I remember it not being great, but pretty fun. I mean, it's Jack Nicholson. Good night, Craig. See you, Craig. Um, yeah, I have not seen Going South since I was a little kid. Um, my parents rented it, and it was not good, from my, <laughs> what I recall. But I was a kid, so I don't know. You know, so I'm curious. Right. Well, any other thoughts? Any other guesses? Yeah, I don't know. The way the way Vinegar Syndrome writes clues, this these could literally be anything, and they could have a justification to make it work. I feel like it, people will figure it out, though. People had it on lot had it all figured out for yeah. this this month. So, I mean, yes, yeah, so the Terminator that certainly <laughs> would be great. Uh. (laughs) oh leaning heavily into the terminator i mean (laughs) i would love to see the terminator get a 4k from vinegar syndrome i just i just don't feel like that's going to happen but yeah i i mean the the rumor is there is a 4k of the terminator coming this year but i mean everybody assumed the studio of course yeah xniff says exterminator one and two Hmm. I don't know if those fits into those two. Yeah. Masterpiece of big budget. It's not a big budget film. Neither one of them are the exterminators. Right. They're, I don't know about the mouth watering aspect and a regional law tour. I wouldn't call James Gluckin house regional. Not really. Um, I d- dig both those movies. So I, I mean, I, that would be awesome, but. Yeah, I thought the 4K of I have the 4K of T2 and I haven't watched it yet because I've heard it's not good. Well, and I just posted the comment, but uh, as as we found out in the last handful of months, Studio Canal used the 3D transfer for that. That was mm. approved and put that on the 4K disc, and that has what that's what has been used for the last handful of years for the T2. And so the rumor supposedly is that uh, we might even be getting a better version of that eventually. 
Yeah, I, I, I would hope so. And I also got the Blu-ray just to have a backup. So I have to check those out and check out the book. <laughs> Thank you very much for the kind comment. Thank you. I would love to be back. Uh, for the record, I've already gotten a, a text from someone else that says, Ryan is a great guest and he has to come back as well. Oh, thank you guys. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, Mike, well played. Yeah, correct. That's really funny. I should have. Yeah, that's why I have I said I haven't seen it yet. That's I need to see it and I will love it because it's gonna be 3D, but in two dates, it's gonna be perfect. Just all the Terminator action coming right at you. It's going to be so cool. <laughs> Eating Raul, but Eating Raul just got put out by, uh, that was put out by uh, Criterion. Not that they couldn't double dip, but. Because I just picked it up. I just picked up Eating Raul. <laughs> Paul says, awesome show, Ryan's. Um, man, I just had a, no, it, it doesn't fit. Never mind. The whole uh, regional auteur part really throws that off. Yeah, the mouth-watering classic from a regional law tour. I mean, are we doing some Italian? I mean, that that makes me think is it some sort of cannibal? But like regional would I would imagine is here, right? Generally, yes. But uh, I. So I'll just say that the thing that I was just thinking is, is it finally like a really great release of uh, the thief, the cook, his wife, and their lover? That's a good call. That would, but is that regional? That's what I I get tripped up on the regional thing. Yeah. Squirm, <laughs> squirm. That I, I don't know if that's regional, but yeah, interesting. How am I feeling about the VS title so far for tonight? I like Homegrown. Yes, that is the most exciting thing for me for sure. Uh, yes, Umbrella did put that out before. Um, and I believe there was a rumor that Janice might have gotten that eventually and it was going to be Criterion, but I don't know. I, it, it's odd that it doesn't have a release at this point. And Squirm actually, it's kind of a good guess. That's a good guess, Squirm. And it's been out Damn, of print a good for one. quite some time. It's a good guess. And Jeff Lieberman, I mean, he's New York, but I don't know how regional that is, but. Yeah, he also did Just Before Dawn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I wanted to double check this. It stars uh, Don Scardino, who like went on to like work on like 30 Rock and stuff. Did like a lot of work on... Uh, nice. Directing uh, a lot of sitcoms and stuff. Hmm. I think he's got a red hair in that. Saw that a couple of years ago, Squirm. Oh, Sibner's on it. Has a, a, a list of lost or partially lost film negatives. Okay. Now, I'm now, yeah, Squirm is a damn good guess now that I think about it. Mm -hmm. And that that is one, like, they've picked up so many of those Scream Factory titles that have gone out of print. It would not be super surprising. Oh yeah, I could see that have that they thought the the yeah the, the negative was lost. The stuff I think the stuff is still owned by Arrow. They still have the. Uh, they're the ones that release that have the release on Arrow on uh, on the stuff. That's where I have my Blu-ray from. Me too. Although I, I think just like a year and a half ago they re-upped their contract on the stuff. So yeah, I don't think that one would be available yet. Although I got to admit, I would love a, a really nice 4K of the stuff. With uh, please, Arrow, if you're going to do it, give us updated features and make it like a hard box release rather than what they did for it the first time because it's Larry uh, Cohen. Come on, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. We haven't got to that one yet. That's one so I'm like waiting, savoring when we're going to eventually talk about the stuff. It's such a good film. Love that movie. Yeah, Tarantino's my best friend's birthday. That would be an interesting one for them to put out. Um, and it would be interesting to think of Tarantino as a regional filmmaker. But 
But that's <laughs> Tarantino is a re regional filmmaker. I mean, sure, sure. Simner says, "I think I found it right after." Oh, okay. Here we go. I mean, you're gonna have to tell us on the chat, there, right? Yeah, uh, there are other Larry Cohen movies that are not on HD yet. There, they that is we're we're due for sure. 1974's Corpse Eaters. Corpse Eaters. I mean, that goes with the hints there. That's a good call. And Wave it's... is asking, what does it mean by regional? Regional usually means like uh, a Bill Rabane type that was mentioned in the chat earlier, or like a Bill Griffey who pretty much made all of their movies in like in, the in bayous in Louisiana, mm -hmm. or uh, you know, in, in a tiny little town in Florida, or. Uh, like Earl Owens B in North Carolina. There's so many of these just clustered directors that just stayed in one little area. 1974's Corpse Eaters is a good call, though. Man, how'd you find it, Simner? Looked up corpse yeah, eaters. But... Looks interesting. Was that on the list, Sibner? Get Stephen Thrower on here. He'll know. Uh, well, funny enough, Stephen Thrower was supposed to be on here and uh, had it all scheduled, and he had to back out. We've not been able to reschedule yet. Was he? Did I take his place? <laughs> right. What shoes to fill? Oh, awesome. uh, after being sold as a tax write-off, the film faded into obscurity for years until Encore Home Video rediscovered it in 93 and released it on DVD several years later, claiming to have transferred their copy from the only known surviving print. This version runs 57 minutes and is considered incomplete. So that actually, that could be really cool for them if they found the entire thing and be the first ones. Hmm. Weird. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I just picked up Stephen Thrower's book, Nightmare USA, too. So maybe I'll look it up. I was reading out of that today. Man, literally this afternoon. <laughs> it's like it's daunting. That book it is. Yeah. It's massive, too. It's hard to find where to put that thing. It's so big. Apparently, his Fulci book is even bigger. Oh, it is. And then the Franco book uh, is two books that are bigger than the Fulci book. So, yeah, it gets super, super overwhelming. Uh, Simner just Googled. Uh, <laughs> but, man, can I Google? That's what she said. <laughs> Simner. Oh man, that's I mean, yeah, that seems to fit. Interesting. And it's the 70s, and that's what one of those are. Ronnie, yeah, those Franco books, uh, they are they are the Bible for sure. Um how much should I say here? Uh I used both of those books quite a bit uh last August and September. Okay. Sam, to start Googling with that. Figure out what Ryan's saying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, Volume 1 has supposedly been uh, needing to go back and print for quite some time. Oh, the, that's what she said was Chad saying it's so big. <laughs> very good. Very good, Simner. Well, I mean, it seems like Simner may have cracked the code. I think he did. I, I think, I think, I think that was actually a really good shout. We and, uh, had a man on the scene and he he brought back the goods. Told us, I think we got, I think that I, if it's not that, I'm going to be surprised. I think that's a great call. Night, Sam. Thanks for hanging out, man. 
uh see ya sam <laughs> ronnie really um yeah this has been fun uh I, I don't think we got much else to cover um really just want to say uh if i didn't stress it enough earlier everybody please make sure you're subscribed to the new world pictures podcast because it's uh perfection Thank in you, every sir. form I, I don't know about that but it's true <laughs> it's, it's deliberately a little messy but i appreciate that no that's very kind of you uh thanks thanks a lot ryan um thank you for having me on man this is awesome it is so great to be on the other side um you know normally i'm in the chats <laughs> throwing bits out there with everybody else so this is very cool thank you for having me on here and uh i i hope i hope you guys enjoyed it um it's a great week of releases i'm excited to spend all my money you had some damn good titles tonight i'm, I'm happy dude for you. <laughs> yeah i'm yeah i'm very excited Hopefully we didn't do anything that would take uh, the video off of YouTube and screw you up. <laughs> no, not not at all, not at all. Um, yeah, that's uh, yeah. I mean, anything that people need, uh, let us know. Um, we'll see you next Thursday. Like I said, next week I got an interview going up with Altered Innocence. The week after that, uh, Jim O'Hare here in the movie room with me. Great, um, great interview. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah. Dude. Uh, New World good Pictures stuff. podcast putting out gold every week uh, that they release something just just go subscribe you guys are amazing thank you sir thank you yeah hopefully we'll have some good stuff we're about to dip into something that we have never touched which is uh television new world television oh that's gonna be what we're gonna start doing because we've never talked about that element of new world but um we we did video or we started to go into just we we did already some not uh some video only releases but we're gonna we're gonna we dipped into that in October where we did just stuff that was released on new world video and nowhere else. And uh, now we're going to start dipping into some television because there is a ton of, of right. movies, TV shows. Like they did a ton of stuff. So yeah. we're just going to be dipping our toes into it. So it'll be fun. All right. Well, everybody, uh, if you're interested, I'll, I'll throw out a uh, Patreon too. I never really um, put sh- Oh, wow. Oh, hey. Okay. Well, I didn't want to say anything, but <laughs> Ryan Gallon on an upcoming CIP disc. That's pretty I, exciting. Yeah, yeah, that is extremely exciting. Um, but I didn't want to say I didn't want to say anything because I didn't know if I should. But that's Look at they, that. you know, they that I mean, okay, it's out there. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, that like whets saying, your appetites, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, go, go, go look up new world pictures podcast and you'll find why, because it's great. Um, anyways, uh, Patreon link in the description below. Come join the discord. Come talk with me and the other Ryan all the time, because we're posting pickup pictures and asking questions about random movies and talking about what we're watching and loving it. So, uh, Hey, we'll uh we'll see you on the next one everybody. Yeah, see you but